All August long, we're doing a kind of funny Patreon pledge drive and asking you to chip in on patreon.com slash kind of funny if you enjoy the shows. For real, we're an 11 person independent operation and we couldn't do it without your financial support on patreon.com slash kind of funny. So thank you. What's up and welcome back to Kind of Funny's DCEU in review, our final trip into this franchise. Isn't that right, Greg? No, Aquaman. Oh, Aquaman 2. Last night we had a conversation about Aquaman 2 being another movie in the DCEU that is still coming. And I looked over at Gia and she was like, this is the last one, right? I was like, no, there's still Aquaman 2. She's like, no, we already saw that. I was like, we didn't. You didn't. And she got in a fight with me like, no. We we must have seen Aquaman yeah. too. <laughs> we haven't. No, seen. if you remember, of course, we, we had the 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 wonderful post credit sequence from uh, the Flash movie uh-huh. that set that up. Like, oh my god, I'm so excited to see where Jason Momoa is lying face down in a puddle of mud. Exactly, exactly. You see, uh, and then this one, just uh, they they just have a bin of post credits DCEU scenes that are going nowhere ever, and they yeah. just keep tossing things on it. There you go. See where it lands. See if we ever see it again. Is this DCEU? Is this DCU? Is this somewhere in between? We'll have to wait and find out. I had a point last night, Yeah. roughly 15 hours into that movie, where I just thought to myself, I never want this to end. I don't want this ride <laughs> to end. Mostly because I'm just scared of what it could be. Uh-huh. I know this is the enemy you know. You okay. know what I mean? Okay. This is the enemy you know. Yeah. This movie halfway through it, I'm like, have I have I just been dreaming this whole thing, or is this really the movie that we've been watching for the last hour and a half? I cannot wait to talk to you boys about this. I'm really sad. <laughs> of course, I'm Tim Geddes. I'm joined ah, by No. The big <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not, we're no. Talk about that. I'm I a goffin. No. Like, I'm a goffin. I think that is going to be like a Tony moment for us that ah, we're just going to no. talk about for the rest of our lives. Uh, of course, that's the voice of the Big Daddy, Greg Miller. Hi, Tim. Uh, we're also joined today by the producer slash edition next car. Top of the evening to you, Tim. I'm really uh, bummed that we aren't joined by uh, Andy Cortez because he's back home. Uh, I do feel like there'd be a lot of this movie that he would enjoy. Yeah. Um, but uh, he, he's not here for it. So I'm sure he will give us his thoughts uh, at some point when he watches this. I don't know that he's going to be rushing out to the theater to see it. But with um, this lame duck DCEU. Who knows? Who knows, everyone? Um, But of course, this is Kind of Funny's In Review, where each and every week we get together to rank, review, and recap different movie franchises. The chat is is clamoring, Greg. The the live chat over on patreon.com slash kind of funny that people can be in. Uh, If you go to that website, support us. You get to watch the show live as we record it. They're, they're, They're chanting Coke, Coke. Coke, get this man a Coke. I just had a jelly donut, like literally, and the napkin is in my pocket for eating it on this set. So I think, just give me a second. Uh huh. And uh that jelly's gonna be jiving. We got some jelly jabs. And when you got a DCEU movie, just to fucking goddamn sit here and be pissed off about, you don't need it. You don't need the Coke. We'll see if we get there, everybody. But he is jellied up. Um, But like I was saying, this is in review. Each and every week we get together to rank, review, and recap different movie franchises. We're here once again in the DCEU for all jokes aside. What is probably going to be one of the final entries in this storied franchise. Um, Thank you for joining us for this journey. Um, We've been working on a lot of scheduling things behind the scenes to figure out what the next uh, in review series is going to be. We've been catching up with a lot of different things and we're pretty much out of big movies for the rest of the year. There's a handful, a smattering of things here and there, but the back to back to back to back to back big movies is is over. Um, So we were planning on doing Saw in review next, but the problem with that is Saw 10. It was perfect. There was a perfect Mm -hmm. lineup to it. It got pushed up a month. So Saw was going to be closer to Halloween. Saw 10 got pushed back or up to uh, early September, late September, somewhere in that, which really threw things off. But we got together. We put our heads together. We're like, what are we going to do about this? And we decided we're still going to do Saw in review. We're going to commit. There's enough interest here. There's enough excitement. I think the franchise is going to be awesome for an in review franchise of talking about all the twists and turns. It's awesome. It's awesome. There we go. That was good. That was good. Um, so we're going to do it. It's going to be a little bit weird. Give me the piano, Kevin. <laughs> the piano. In oh, and his little piano. We're going to do Saw in review, starting with Saw 1, going all the way to Saw 10 when it comes out. We're just going to review it a little bit later. So it's going to drop in theaters, and then we're going to review it around Halloween. It feels gotcha. proper. If it's Halloween, it must be Saw. Uh, the cast for that one is going to be, I'm very excited about this, y'all. Yeah. It's going to be me. It's going to yeah. be Nick Scarpino. Yeah. It is going to be Andy Cortez. 
It's weird. You'd think, oh, Andy doesn't like horror movies. For some reason, he's okay with Saw. That's weird uh, because Saw is freaky and scary. It's everything so, Andy hates. But it's not like, ah, scary. Ah, no, like, but it's be. definitely like. He's about to learn. Yeah. He's about to find out. All right. Can you believe I've never seen Saw 1? I know, dude. This is about to be good. I'm telling y'all. This is about to be an interview you don't want to miss. It is the one Carrie Elway's movie I've never seen. Well, oh, I'm excited for you then because we got me, we got Nick, we got Andy, we have Joey Noel, and Joey T. We have Alfredo Diaz. Woo! For, for Sa. Me and him used to grow up watching Sa every Halloween back in high school. So I'm really excited to, to get him back. We'll watch from the beginning, see what our thoughts are. There's some good, there's some bad, and there's a lot of in between. So we're going to see how this all goes, but we're going to start that next week, taking a small minor detour over to uh, the Conjuring Universe. Cuckoo in review. Cuckoo in review. In review. Uh, for the Nun 2 somewhere Everybody. in there. Uh, but, anyways, it's going to be exciting. I'm too disappointed about that. I didn't hear what you said. I'm Fine. none too disappointed Love in that. that. Love that. Uh, anyways, it's going to be a real spooky you season. Tonight. You can hear everyone hanging up the phone on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. We're done listening Man, to this what's podcast. What's Giant Bob got going on? <laughs> 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 anyways, uh, get excited for that. Of course, you can watch every single episode we do of that on YouTube.com slash kind of funny or roosterteeth.com. You could also uh, get it as a podcast by searching your favorite podcast service for kind of funny in review uh, and it'll be right there for you if you want to go above and beyond though and help all of this happen including things like saw and review because i'm going to be honest i don't expect that that one's going to necessarily Set hit on where we need yeah. it to um but I, I promise you we're going to bring the heat content wise and we love all of your support to be able to do this cool stuff over on patreon.com slash kind of funny uh our patreon producers jedi master deadpool james hastings casey andrew logan delaney uh nathan lamoth and patrick delgado are amazing and they help allow all this to happen and you can join that illustrious crew by going to patreon uh today we're brought to you by liquid iv but i will tell you about that later because we got to talk about it y'all we got to talk about blue beetle oh, all right the beats the beats now i keep saying this but it's just such a fun little anecdote to me that kind of funny started in many ways depending on how you want to start the story mm -hmm. sure you know what i mean where you want to finish the story finish right but you go back you, there's we, we we talk a lot about uh oreo oration we talk a lot about a conversation with colin we don't often talk about Horribly, horribly wrong, wrong comic, comic book, book origins, origins. Mm. where back in the days when we were all at IGN, we were talking about what cool, fun content can we make on our YouTube channel, right? Back then, Greg's YouTube channel. Yeah, it was a game, game over Greg. And I'll never forget being in the, 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 the Mushroom Kingdom room at, uh, at IGN, the, the themed conference room. Mm -hmm. And we're going through the different characters that we were going to have um, Greg uh, kind of pitch to Colin, and then Colin would give the, the origin story of this character. Yeah. And I remember Blue Beetle coming up and none of us believing he was real. That we were just like, that's not an act. There's no, yeah. Greg, this is the line yeah. that Greg must be, I've just made Cameron this shit. Kennedy up. says, horribly wrong comic origins is the first time I ever heard of Blue Beetle. And you're yeah, welcome, DC. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Yeah, if it wasn't for you. And Geek Week. God bless YouTube Geek Week. You're right. Remember that was the thing where it was like our first like, guys. I got an email from YouTube and they want us to make content for this week. I'm sure it'll blow the channel up. Yeah. It did it. No. We worked so hard on all those videos. Panda Musk work. was involved, right? Yeah. It, was, it was a whole thing. Anyway, here we are in 2023 talking about Blue Beetle. I had a runtime of two hours and seven minutes uh, released on Oct released August 18th, 2023. A little back stats for you here. In 2018, it was announced to be an HBO Max project. This was when uh, Warner and HBO Max were going absolutely buck wild, just announcing things left and right alongside Batgirl, which we all understand what happened there. But in December 2021, Warner Brothers revealed that the film would be receiving a theatrical release in August 2023 instead of being produced directly for HBO Max. A big part of this uh, due to the success of the Netflix classic. Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai. Right. They saw an opportunity and they tried taking it here. Um, this one's directed by Angel Manuel Soto, who's born uh, in 1983, a Puerto Rican film director, producer, and screenwriter. Um, the budget of this one was $125 million. Um, I skipped the music, which was done by Bobby Krillick. Bobby! Uh, Bobby Krillick is a British composer, artist, and music uh, producer, and musician. Couldn't get uh, DJ Junkie XL on this one, could No, nope, not on this uh, one. Uh, he also did music for Midsommar, uh, the Ari Aster nice. movie, a couple years back. This one, a very synth-heavy soundtrack for, uh, for Blue Beetle. Um, then we got a budget of $125 million, um, which is 
uh, lower than I expected for something like this, but I guess it kind of makes sense. Not if it was sense. an HBO Max movie you know? start, and then they just ramped up the budget once they decided to... It was going to theaters. Yeah. And uh, in terms of box office, the movie's not even technically out yet right now, so we don't know. Uh, it's not really tracking too well, given many, many, many different um, realities right now. But it is tracking to beat out Barbie this week. Barbie's fifth Finally. week. Finally. Uh, Nothing in theaters. Barbie. Take that, Margot Robbie. It'll, Take it's, it's that. It's getting taken down. We'll see. Ryan Do you think Gosling. Was Barbie's Warner, right? Mm-hmm. Do you think Warner's like, damn. Working each other? You should just push this Blue Beetle movie out by five weeks. Well, I mean, keep Barbie going. I guess not, it's I'm not really going to take going. Business. Yeah, that's not the thing. Like, I, think, I think they'll be okay here with this, but uh, we'll see how this one ends up tracking when all is said and done later. Um, but yeah, without further ado, I kind of want to hear your boys' thoughts on Blue Beetle. Um, Greg, I want to start with you, Mr. DC. Hey, Tim, how are you? Good. Um, I think. It's one of those movies where you could take in a grab bag of our opinions on comic book movies and find it and apply it to this. Where I think the main problem with this one is Act 3. I think that's really where it was just like the heaviest of eye rolls of like this. Gary Widow today when we were streaming mentioned, you know, uh, you, Chad GPT and using that for stuff. And it's like almost like this is such a cookie cutter tropey third act to the point of ha having like the same. Like, I don't know which one, but I... I'm so sick of in these kind of movies hearing, you were wrong. My love for my family isn't a weakness. It's my strength. I was like, oh my God. Like really? How many times have we seen this? How many is fight the hero? Have the fucking mirror match. Have the stupid evil corporate person, man or woman who wants to build an army of super. And that's what the whole thing. And it's just like, what a why? Like, up until I, the, I throughout the movie, I was I found myself being like, man, I'm enjoying this. You know what I mean? Like the words of a wise man, Tim Gettys, kept echoing in my ear from the Flash, where you were like, hey, this reminded me for better or worse of a comic book that I was I was watching a comic mm -hmm. book, and I really feel like this one, mm -hmm. even with the shitty third act, feels like a comic book. But that last act was so like by the numbers, and and then and then to start unraveling that. The rest of the movie was also incredibly by the numbers, right? Like, I was explaining to Jen over coffee today, and I'm like, you're getting the same moments, right? Of like, how's this suit work? Oh, I'm in space. Oh, I'm falling. Oh, at the last second, I'm okay. Like, it's like, all right, all right. All right. You know what I mean? I feel like we could have done a lot more interesting stuff with the suit slash alien, right? The AI, right? Talking to him. Like, that was like... Becky G. I don't know who that the is. singer Becky G. She was the Yellow Ranger in the Power Rangers movie. Okay. Yeah. We could have had more with that, I feel, of a fun mm -hmm. back and forth. I don't know if they laid off of that because they didn't want a Spider-Man homecoming situation. But it's like I would have leaned more into that of having an aggressive AI that wants to be symbiotic with you. And, and you know, maybe it's too much like Venom. And it's like this movie's a lot like a lot of different things. So it's like the most the glowingest things I would say, right, especially trying to explain it to Jen today over coffee, where it's like she's like, and so this one's not in it or it isn't. And I'm like, he the blue the blue beetle could be a dcu character this could this actor and this character guy could be it and i wouldn't be fine with that because i imagine it would be a cameo in one of the uh, super the next su the superman or the batman picture or whatever in a justice league thing he pops up and we don't need his backstory anymore you don't need it and i'd be all right because i thought the actor was good i liked him i liked his family a lot i thought they did nail that that was a fun family that was a cool family that was a loving family the color in this world the way they made it pop in palermo city or whatever it is like i was like oh man like this feels like they're trying to give this city an identity like a metropolis like a gotham city like a whatever and it felt like a comic it felt like it was jumping off the page i liked all of that family and world building stuff but overall this is just like a no you don't need to see this you do not need to rush out if you're listening to this you'll be fine if you want to completely skip it you'll be fine like it's Fun at points, but by the end, like, and I was like, oh, man, wait, wait. But then it's like, this is the fucking bad guy. You and me were talking on the way out. Like, <laughs> this is, like, if we want to just count from the MCU, what, this is like 15 years of superhero movies. This is the best you could do that at the very end of this fucking movie, I got to see these guy's memories. He'd be like, oh, yeah, he's a human. Like, I mean, I, like, we're not killers. I'm like, you should have fucking killed this guy, shouldn't you? You didn't really establish why, you know what I mean? Like, and not to mention, then you got fucking the blue, the cord mobile killing people. And it's like hilarious. You're like, all right. I'm hilarious. Cool. What are the fucking rules here? Yeah. 
Nick Scarpino, what did you think of Blue Beetle? Yeah, unfortunately, I'm with Greg on this one. I think it was, I think they, they gave it their best shot. And I think if this movie had been an HBO Max film, um, I still probably would have been very bored watching it by about hour, you know, 60 minutes in. Um, I was, I was, I was along for the ride. 16? 60. Okay. So about an hour in is when I started thinking, okay, we're getting, we're really getting into well-worn territory here. We've got a generic plot line. Right when they get to the mansion, I was like, oh, this is interesting. We're going somewhere else with this. Her dad's like, I, I was wondering how the suits are going to happen because we saw it in the intro of what was going on. Uh, all those old school, like 1980s suits. And I was like, this is cool. I wonder if we're going to go off here. We're going to get some tech here. Uh, and they did. And that kind of, that stuff was interesting to me. But by the time we get into the third act and it really does, I mean, I, I, I literally just spaced out for a solid five minutes when Blue Beetle was fighting Red Beetle because it's just OMAC. OMAC. But, you know, it's right, you know. <laughs> Oh, Mac. My, my, my sounds like a my, diet. My favorite thing before that is like we're sitting there and like they had comic books on uh, the scene or, or the seats or whatever. And I'd been paging through it or whatever. And Tim sits down next to me and, and like just the poster and the key arts up. And he's like, so like how many people on this poster can you name? I'm like, no, just Blue Beetle. And you're like, really? I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, who's he fighting this? I'm like, I have no fucking idea. And so as soon as they got going and like, oh, it's the Omac. Omac. I literally know, I know who they're fighting. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't realize they were doing this. Okay. My apologies. Yeah. I, I, and of course. It's not really what that, you know what I mean? But yeah. it's like, oh, I see what we're doing. Okay, yeah. cool, or whatever. Um, you know, I think it had, it had moments that were fun. And I think the cast, you know, kudos to them for, for doing the best they possibly could with the material, with the exception of Sharon, uh, Susan Sarandon, who I don't, and I say this very cautiously, I don't think she knows what movie she was in. It was the other I, thing I really too, don't. On the way out, Tim was like, man, if it wasn't for Helen Mirren and Shazam too, <laughs> like, uh, like Susan Sarandon was bad in this picture, but like, not, not Helen Mirren bad. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think it, you could probably think the I'll Raspberry Award is not either of them. Because I just feel like it's one of those, it, it, it's just every time she was on screen, and it breaks my heart because Susan Sarandon is, is a fucking yes, God tier level actress. She's great, yeah. She's great in everything she's in, but I just feel like this is one of those, like, did she only give him one take? That was like her contract stipulation. I, I, it, 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 it felt like they had her for a day. They were <laughs> like, like, let's film all this stuff. Like, all right, go. We have next one. I got to go to the next shows one. shows up. She's like, you guys have me uh, Tuesday from two to three. And they're like, we can make it work. We can get so this So what's my direction? Is it to be like kind of weirdly sexy towards this robot guy? Yeah. Oh, th okay. I'm just going all in on that. Oh, he's more like a childlike figure to me. Right. Okay. He's that's like, a weird reveal right. based on how you were touching him earlier. Yeah. But okay. Okay. It, it's a lot. There's a lot of watch his mom get gruesomely blown up. Yeah. Right? There's a lot of interesting. I, there's a lot of things that, that I think the movie kind of held back. Um, and, and a lot of it was like in the third act where I, I feel like she's just in places where she shouldn't be. Why is she in the helicopter? Why is she not just controlling this from like this massive headquarters they have? That's like an impenetrable fortress that's sitting on in, in the Miami city or wherever they're from. A lot of, a lot of interesting uh, choices made here. Um, I want to give a shout out to George Lopez, who is just you low. You know, he takes, family. he takes a lot of shots that George Lopez, half of them made it, half of them did not. But that is the same criticism I have when, for any Guardians of the Galaxy movie. I busted up when he, when, when they uh, drove off in the truck and he's looking out the window and he's like, ah, he falls down. It was oh, fucking <laughs> hilarious. That was funny. And he got me on another line where he was like, no, not the taco. He refers to his yeah, truck as the taco. taco. I was yeah, like, yeah, fuck, yeah, that's yeah, funny. That's yeah. good. Was um, it Selena? A bop. So much. But also I, Chris Anka, of course, famed comic book person. The red dude is supposed to be Omac. Oh, oh uh -huh. yeah, Chris. Oh yeah. <laughs> I call him Red Beetle. Um, but I feel like it's okay. it's it's one of those situations where you where you go, hey, you know, can we can we really rely on on George Lopez for a lot of the the comic relief of this movie? He's obviously along for the ride a lot more than I thought he was going to be in the trailers because he's basically with Jaime the entire time. Um, and I'm not mad at that. It's just. It's unfortunate that he has to do a lot of heavy lifting because the the, the story with Jaime and uh, I forget the actress's name, uh, Bruna, is just so like eh, generic. They don't really have any chemistry whatsoever. Her character, oh, eh, it's fine. It's I, not I really like, there. I was rooting for them. I'm yeah. rooting for them in the same way I'm rooting for anyone for a movie to end. Um, <laughs> I just wanted it to end after a while. Uh, you, you had to like the boner jokes though. I mean, it was it, again. We it, obviously I laugh at boner jokes, Greg. Yeah. Always. Always. Hey, that warm, the part of your body, your crotch is getting warm. And then warm. when he got up and, and he had to cover had, himself yeah. up. Uh, Weirdly, weird, weird though, because it's like, yeah. who's this movie for? But, um, but yeah, I think a lot of it just unfortunately was a miss. And I think a lot of it just was, was a little too generic. And the Jenny character yeah. and the, you know, the, how many times have we seen the younger character who's like revolting against the, the senior character because they want to do the bad thing and they want to do the good thing. And it's like, I don't know. I just didn't buy a lot of it uh, and buy 
by the time we get to the castle, I'm like, I, I just... I, 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 I just couldn't find a quiet enough moment to lean over to Tim and be like, it's nice that they split the sets for the Flash and Blue Beetle. Yeah. For this, we're going to go up on the rooftop and talk about being a superhero oh moment. I'm like, this, so true. this dilapidated castle looks a lot like the dilapidated Wayne Manor. Yeah. Um, so, unfortunately, this is this one was a miss for me. Um, not in a huge way, just in a... I, I just feel like it's... Di- I, I feel like it's disappointing for... Um, how do you say the actor's name? Zolo? Is that how you say his name? I think it's Zolo, yeah. Zolo? Disappointed for him. I like this guy. I I, I like I, I love uh, Cobra Kai. I like the series. Um, and so I was hoping this would be kind of there a star vehicle. Oh my, uh, just like you remember. Yeah, there it is. That's his human name. Carapax is yeah. Yeah, remember that's like General Carapax, whatever. Lieutenant or something like that. But but yeah, well, Tim, what do you think? And also, I'm sorry, real quick, uh, Jameson in the chat goes, wasn't Omac the name of the statue in the old Legends of the Hidden Temple show? No, that was Omac. Omac. Yes, with an L. You ate a rock, Olmec? Let's roll. Hell yeah, baby. Uh, I'm not Maybe. far off from where you guys are. I think I'm a little bit, I don't even want to say more positive on it, because I don't even think that's the, the case. I think that this is a good movie. I think very little about it is bad. I just think that it's a little embarrassing that in 2023, a superhero movie like this is just good. And it's only good because it does nothing risky, and it only does things we've seen before countless times i did a quick little uh napkin math look at our um in review playlist to try to figure out how many superhero movies we have reviewed or re-reviewed or how many times we've done content about reviewing a superhero movie and my count looks at like 109 all right price that's probably off a little bit but it's no less than 109 and i feel like this movie does what a lot of those movies have done as well as they do but when we've seen it 109 times, yeah. and when we've seen, like, I can compare this movie in so many ways to Iron Man 1, to Spider-Man Homecoming, to Black Panther. I don't think that it does any of those things worse than a lot of the elements, but it definitely doesn't do them better. And all those movies I named are many, many years old. We have had 40 movies since then, 40 TV shows, so much going on that it kind of just feels like this is, it's a competent movie. I, I'm not with you, Nick, in that like I, I was entertained the entire time. Like I wasn't really bothered by the runtime because it really does feel like a greatest hits. And there wasn't too many of the like the misses on it. It was like kind of the, all right, they're doing this part and it's fun enough to see and this part's fun enough to see. But like none of it was just, great like nothing was great about this and even some of the things that were like hey this works and it's cool i'm a sucker for blue and pink neon lights i'm a sucker for synth scores this movie didn't deserve any of that yeah <laughs> that was no sense that at was, all that was have a that really style. big question for me i'm like what would this just felt like hey people like synth they like stranger things they like this vibe let's, let's Here just it is. in there but i was like what is the point other than i will say at a moment we do go back to the dad's house and it is an 80s vibe and I was thinking, okay, maybe that's where they're going with this, and that's why that is. But it wasn't important enough, I think, to, to Jaime's story to really kind of back up the style of the film. It felt like my, style. My mm-hmm. belief was that it was based on the town. Yeah, yeah and yeah, the town. Yeah, you yeah. see the city, and it's it's like it has neon. those colors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but it's Miami. It's, it, and, and that, yeah, and I get it. It should have been more like, like Latin themed. Like it should have been, it should have felt more like that. You know? Miami always kind of has that. Like, I mean, Real Housewives I don't, I don't think, I don't think Miami, scheme. I don't think 80 synth when I think of Miami. I think of like. This is a you know okay. yeah, Cuban, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, Latin yeah, American yeah, yeah. sort of field. Anyway, sorry, I interrupted yeah. you. No, 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 no. I, I, we're, we're all on the same page on where, where this falls down there. It's like, I feel like a lot of the cultural stuff was done very well. You see it and you're like, this, they're really doing a good job with this. Like, this feels like families I grew up with. This feels like people that I know. Um, and again, I, I'm bummed that Andy didn't get to see it because I feel like he would have got a lot out of this. A lot of this movie is in Spanish. Some of this movie has subtitles. Some of it doesn't. The way Gia was sitting with the thing, in, uh, oh, no. the, the, the like barrier that Nick jumped over during Spider-Man Homecoming okay, not was in one. front of her or far from home um, uh, was blocking the subtitles. So she didn't know there were subtitles. So like at the end of the movie, she was like, they really expect you to know Spanish. And I was like, what are you talking about? It's very it, funny. She's so smart. Um, She's but, tiny, but anyways, tiny. it was, uh, I thought they did a lot of that stuff well. Um, and that was kind of cool, but it's, I just think overall, it was there were so many elements in this where there's the Iron Man moment like Greg's talking about of cool, we're flying up to space, falls down and stops himself. But then there's also the, hey, your suit can do fucking anything. Do whatever you want. And it's like, oh my God, this is like way too limitless here. And then there's the giant bug ship that they get in. I can which make is anything like, I want. And he goes to make a sword. And I'm like, is he making a buster sword? Did is he this make Cloud's sword? And then he, he then does Cloud's limit break. 
kind of. It was but that it's thing where they did enough. it, and I was like, either this is just. And she's like, good choice. And so I'm like, this is either just he's making a sword that looks cool, or yeah, it was supposed to be. It would have been helpful if at I any think, point I would have seen him. I like Final Fantasy or some shit like that. Right? I think it was supposed to be a Final Fantasy VII reference there, but that's coming from me, and it wasn't that clear. Yeah, so it's like. Yeah. Man, and there definitely wasn't that many other cool things. There could have been. The idea, that's dope. But seeing the this giant ship, this weird spaceship thing. The bug. The, the, the bug. The bug. The, 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 the George Lopez Iconic. and the family is like flying through and like doing all these, like handling it. There's a point that Greg leaned over to me where it's like there was, they spent such a long time talk, like showing them piloting this ship and like, tr like dealing with like, oh man, we can't crash. We can't do all this. Then they do this like family group hug. Who the fuck's flying the spaceship they're in? <laughs> like, it's just, go they just didn't give a shit about yeah. that type of stuff. And it was just like, uh, very much like a comic book. Oh yeah, absolutely. But it's like, it just felt funny because, uh, sorry, taking this back to some of the things like I earlier said, there's nothing bad about this movie. That's not true. There, there is a lot of bad things, specifically Susan Sarandon, who is, fucking horrible like so bad the plot of the bad guy where at the very end he gives this backstory through memories and it's so 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 I mean so, you've only so heard me talk a few dumb. times to you but I saw everything he saw and now I can show it to you in this instance here you go I, okay cool you're right he is a human I won't kill him I wouldn't have killed him and I'm glad we didn't kill him now I'm gonna let him drag this other human being into a fire dude, and explode so that's and die and we kill see him. We see this the most ridiculously over the top explosion in like the most like fucked up way. We also see George Lopez cause the giant ship to pierce a human being while he's laying on the floor and then step as his body is there. The and they basically like did a little while leg they, shake and shook him off. Oh while my they, while God. they laugh and they laugh inside. They're like, this is the most fun we've had all day. And there's something about how tonally dissonant it is and Susan Sarandon showing up and like Greg's now referenced it. Do the do the sound effect again of Susan Sarandon. Ah! No, <laughs> there's a point where uh, the the love interest uh, steals uh, Jenny the, the Cord. She's Jenny got her own Cord. thing. She's All gonna right. inherit because she's Ted Cord, the original fucking yeah. Blue Beetle's daughter. Show some goddamn respect. Mm -hmm. Takes the uh, um, MacGuffin of the movie that they introduce way too late. Um, throws it on the floor and steps on it, and Susan Sarandon just looks like ah, this. No, ah, no, she's laying on the ground. Ah, no, it's like the way I would be like if Ben took my fucking hot pocket off the de table and threw it again. And yeah. it was one of the fucking funniest things I've a seen in so long. Laugh from our that, and it, it's not supposed to be funny, no, but it, no, no. multiple of these things hit the "this is so bad it's good" category for me in a way that Lucy Liu and Helen Mirren were not enjoyable whatsoever. So I don't want to give too much credit to that but this movie man not that bad but absolutely not great in any way yeah, yeah that's or. the thing is it's not that bad but it's not that good yeah where it's like it's not yeah it's not bad it's not good we'll yeah really go out and if this it. was the first superhero movie you saw oh my god yeah eh, sure pretty yeah. damn cool yeah, yeah. you know and I, I i think that this movie is for uh audience like i do think that there's going to be a group of younger kids more family oriented that are going to get a lot from this at some point but i just struggle to really think of that world when there are over 109 other superhero movies that are available on hbo max and disney plus and anywhere that you can watch whenever the hell you want it's one of those things where you think it, it, you can draw such an analog to so many different movies that 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 obviously and granted a lot of the criticism that we have of this movie in in general is just the it's just comic books in general right it's just the mirror of all these stories the origin stories of all these characters eventually like you know dc copied marvel marvel copied copied dc but like there are moments where i legit the dc didn't copy marvel okay sure sure the atom you know what i mean ant-man you know what i mean like which one came first dc I don't know if that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> you get a bet. You know, I was just blind to fanboy this. So I feel about yeah. it. Let's go. Um, but literally, there was a moment where I was like, I stopped for a second. I was like, wait, am I watching Ant Man? What's happening? Ant Man of the Wasp? Like, what's going on? Where are we right now? Because there's so many parallels between these movies that that it took it, it starts to trip you out after a while. Yeah, I I will say, and we've already said this in a couple different ways. I don't think there's ever been a superhero movie that feels identical to this many superhero movies yeah like th this one deserves an award which for is, like holy crap you copy and pasted the most but it's weird because it is beat by beat a perfectly laid out superhero movie 100 percent. it is if you were to say nick sit there and just write the beats of a superhero movie out for you know 120 pages and have the catalyst happen here the first act turning point happen here the you know all it's perfect but it because it so follows that formula, it numbers. feels so formulaic mm -hmm. that we've seen and we've seen it so many times before. It just needed to do something different, 
anything different. This is like, you know, the thing I hold out hope for with the DCU. Here we go. Uh, yeah, see, Adam, I was right. 61 versus uh, 62. There you go. October 61 versus January 62. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get into the plot of this movie, The Blue Beetle, in just a second. But here is a word from our sponsors first. This episode is brought to you by Liquid IV. Y'all know how much I love to stay hydrated and Liquid IV makes it easier and better than ever to ensure that I'm always living my best, most hydrated life. And you can too. Liquid IV, the number one powered hydration brand in America is now available in sugar-free with three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink, plus eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness. Liquid IV hydrates two times faster than water alone. And you can keep your daily routine exciting with three new flavors white peach green grape and lemon lime let me tell you the white peach is good it's real good we hear it kind of funny swear by this stuff one stick of liquid iv in 16 ounces of water hydrates you two times faster and more efficiently than water alone real people real flavor real hydrating now sugar-free grab your liquid iv hydration multiplayer sugar-free in bulk nationwide at costco or get 20 percent off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code kind of funny at checkout that's 20 percent off anything you order when you use promo code kind of funny at liquidiv.com. I, I'm Andy. I do I give them kudos for um for the family. I think that was where they, they were, were like, this is going to be this is what's going to be original about this movie. And in a lot of ways that was a dynamic that I really enjoyed. I like him and the sister. Yep. Just everything else. Really focus good. focus too. The sister. Oh mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Plot, 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 plot. Plot, 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 plot. Make it stop, please! Plot, Welcome plot, plot, to the plot, Blue plot, plot. Beetle, everybody! Uh, we will begin in, like, fucking Antarctica, where there's a giant marble and or Whopper. That's right, the delicious malted milk ball candy everybody loves. The one, the only, Bill Durham, Susan Sarandon shows Durham. up. Yep. What, you know, she's invented something else bigger? Bull Durham. Bull, what did I say? He said Bill Durham, which is great. No, that's the same movie. It's the same movie. <laughs> Bill Paxton, Bull Paxton, same guy. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen it. Would I like it? Bull Durham? Yeah. Oh, you love it. Yeah, it's a great movie. All the time. She, she likes to fucking it, I remember hearing. Uh, well, yes and no. That's her whole She's thing, like a muse right? for, for yeah, yeah, yeah. the But then she picks pictures. a guy and fucks him all. all so, no, she bring, ties bring, him to a bed and reads him poetry. Yeah, she fucks him. Okay, she fucks him. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was. Uh, you really like both on death, sex, and money. It came up. Um, uh, somebody when they were talking about sexuality and stuff, and somebody cited her character in the movie as being like, "Oh, women are allowed to enjoy sex." Yes, okay. she's very, she's very sex positive. Sex positive yeah. She very much. She follows like the double A. Sorry, we're going off a tangent on Bull Durham. Is this follows, like Bill Durham in review? <laughs> the the plot's the plot's great. Uh, she follows a. She's like um, I don't know what the the right term for it would be, but she's like the. I would say team mom or, or team per like she follows a team in like the double A okay like or triple A yeah, yeah, yeah. Ball, ball team like a feeder for the, I think the Yankees or the Giants or whatever and uh, Tim Robbins is the up and coming pitcher yeah and Kevin Costner is like the old school like almost washed out almost they had a thing together they, or they went there and Tim Robbins is just an asshole just Got rookie it. piece of shit kid and of course she brings them together so that Tim Robbins can realize hey a little humility goes a long way gotcha gotcha uh, it's very 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 good movie and then they all fuck and then they all just it's just. Yeah. And Matt, have you ever seen a triple-sided butt plug? <laughs> I tuned out for a second, and that's where I came back in. You're on it, man. You know what I mean? Everybody Vampire loves survivor. me the most, but you're that. great. Uh, oh, anyways, yeah, so there's this fucking marble up in Antarctica-ish. Uh, Susan Sarandon lands it there, and she's like, this is, I can't wait to see this fucking thing. And these guy's like, yo, the thing might not even be in there. She's like, nah, it is. No, I, I got feel a feeling. It. It's I, in there. I can feel it. <laughs> It's that was the moment I was like, oh, we're in for something. So we, uh, people are like cutting through the marble or whatever. And we go inside and in there, boom, blue scarab, the blue beetle and itself. This is a rare thing. You know, movies need to have the the credits on main where you, get, you give all the, the not shout outs, the credit to the, the writers and directors and the main actors and all that stuff. And usually superhero movies have this at the end of the movie, right? Before the, the credits, just the white on black stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but every once in a while, we get treated to a little like... Here's a little fancy intro. We saw it in Fast 6. We saw it in uh, Black Widow. And then here we have it here. Hmm. Also, as you pointed out, they didn't use the DC. Yeah. The important DC thing to... Oh, thank you, Kevin. Thank you so thank much, you, Kevin. Kevin. Wow. There's a loser here. Johnny on the spot, Kevin. <laughs> uh, but, uh, the you know, the little DCEU intro where we see, like, the silhouettes of all the DC characters. Uh -huh. and, like, goes in on Superman yeah, and yeah, Flash yeah. And, all, and Green Lantern and stuff. Like, didn't have it before this one. 
So oh, they just got to be sick of reminding everybody the heroes you want to see aren't in this picture. That, well, Thank you for coming to see Blue Beetle. I think it's more them just like being like, hey, all options are on the Yo, table. It's all whether or not over. It's it's over. It. Nobody knows what we are anymore. We're a joke to you, aren't we, people? Anyways, uh, so we go in there, the Beetle, then we see the Beetle like shooting through space and shit, blowing up a planet, landing on our planet. It's shooting through a whole bunch of different planets. Congratulations, everybody. Uh, but then where do we go? We go to uh, the Palermo City Airport, where the what? The only uh, Jaime. Uh, is landing. He's coming back from Gotham City. Saw That's that. Right. That's cool. Gotham City Gotham University. Law, Gotham right? Law, whatever the fuck's called. Uh, he's come back. He's graduated. Congratulations. His family's there. And again, in a, this is the first time we see him, but in a very comic book slash cartoon way, I appreciate they only wear one outfit the entire time. Yeah. Like they might change colors and shit, but it's always the same outfit. So yep. you're like, oh, I can always identify the dad and the grandma and everybody else. That's, no, that's I never helpful. caught that. Yeah. Sorry, it's a correction. I think he had a Gotham Law sweatshirt because that's where he had intended to go. He's pre law. So I, th I assume he was, well, I don't know what university he went to. I just remember there being a Gotham like law yeah. sweatshirt that he wears when he was talking to his dad in the front. On, by that. But I would assume he went to, you know, you think he went. You well, went remember because he comes back and she says, are you going to go to grad school? And he's like, yeah. not anymore. Yeah. And, and then she so. and then makes a comment about pre law, sure. Yeah. But you think he was wearing the Gotham Law because one day he wanted to go to Gotham Law? Well, it's like, like you go to Harvard Law. You want to go to Harvard Law, but you're going to like, you know, Cal State Fullerton for pre law or whatever. Yeah, but you don't fly to Cal that. State Fuller Fullerton if you're living in Palermo City. You go to Palermo City Community College. Like he had to come from somewhere that was far away. Hmm. But then why wouldn't he be a lawyer? Why not just take Arizona the LSAT? State. If he had finished law school, that. please stay out of this. Then just take the take the LSAT or take the bar and then be a lawyer. All I'm saying is again, they why need would he to go to grad school? There's a cooler right. universe out there where there's a Gotham City. That's that's perfect what too. Because then the second what I see Gotham, right I think, now, Kevin, why am I not my, watching a Batman me, movie? Give me this, Kevin. I don't if you want to digitally zoom in, that's fine with me. Ladies and gentlemen, it's me, Greg Miller. And if you are graduating with no plans to then go to another university, you don't have money yet, you don't have a plan yet, you don't wear the fucking thing. You don't wear the you don't wear the jersey. You know oh, I'm wearing the fucking I'm wearing the goddamn Mizzou thing. I'm not going to Mizzou yet. No, you fucking you only wear it when you go there. That's how this works. So Jaime, I want you know I had a lot of respect for you and your boners before this, but if it turns out you didn't actually go to Gotham University, or whatever, I take back my respect and I no longer appreciate your boners. Thank you, Kevin. Joshy G said it said Gotham University, not Gotham Law. Maybe I was wrong. No, it did say no, law. It did, it did say law. Jack and law. Joshy yeah. G, that's incredibly wrong, and you better super chat right now or we'll come find your family. <laughs> oh, <laughs> say hello to him. Buy him a cake. I don't know if you know this, Joshy They're G. Your way. family makes you weak. <laughs> yeah. Your Patreon supportage makes you strong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was, like, <laughs> find them. I missed There was a couple <laughs> <laughs> There was a couple jokes in this movie that would get, like, disparate laughs throughout the, the audience, and, like, it, it, the Susan Sarandon moment was the one that, like, ah! I want, no! <laughs> I, I want to say everyone laughed at, but I think it was just our row really loudly. Um, but the one joke that was made that I'm the only person that laughed, but I was surprised by because I legit thought it was fucking hilarious was um, he was like, oh, yeah, I'm trying to be a lawyer. I'm in, I'm in pre-law. And then his little Do fucking sister was just like, well, they don't need pre-lawyers. <laughs> That was pretty funny. Yeah. I got I got a laugh out of the first joke in the movie too, where the guy was like, he's like, how do I look? And he goes, you look like you're about a hundred thousand dollars in debt. Yeah. Six figures like, in debt. Six yeah. figures yeah. in yeah. debt. Yeah. I was like, oh, that was pretty. Yeah, that was, that was pretty couple, funny. Couple yeah. I was like, okay, we're we're buzzing around. Because as here. he comes down the elevator, he puts on his his cap, so we all know he graduated. He comes mm -hmm. down, the family celebrates him, congratulations. Then they take him out. For some tacos. Oh, they also had a whole conversation of don't tell him, don't tell him, don't right. tell him, don't tell him, don't tell him. This is our first glance. You know, from Chicago. At what George Lopez is. Bobby Brown with it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, wow, wow, wow. It's a song. You'll catch it one day. You'll catch it one day. <laughs> Rhythm is a dancer. We'll get you a coat. Oh, oh a coat. okay. Yeah. I fucking got him, guys. <laughs> uh, this is the first glance we get. I'm going to get a Coke. Get a coke. <laughs> yeah, it's Coke time. <laughs> At uh, at George Lopez and the mm -hmm. mullet, this awesome mullet, G oh, short, uh, Timberland combat boot or like a work boot look. His and entire it, look was awesome, insane. I, I, I was like, I'm glad he found this character because I think the character kind of starts someplace different than where it ends because we kind of have him midway through. They're like, oh, he's just really into tech, and you're like, okay. Um, that was that from the front that he's one of these off the grid government types. I'm pulling up. Well, it's a very different. <laughs> Coke, I've just caught for the coke, cokes. Coke. Um, yes, but my my perception of him at this was that he's an off the grid sort of conspiracy theorist who is just living 
you know, in the backwoods someplace, not technologically advanced. Like uh, to me, it's like, oh, stay off technology. And Midway then halfway through, through the movie, he creates a fucking superhero device, and yeah. I lost my shit. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Where did that come from? I don't know. And I wish they had set that up more here. I would. I think I would have. The character was fine. I, whatever. It's a fucking comic book movie. You, can, you could introduce that if you want to. But hey, have a couple elements in the car that are like. Doc Brown esque, you know, Rube Goldberg machines in the car, something crazy. The ru- the radio has a holographic. How the fuck did you do that? Give me a little bit more yeah. than him. Just he being reminded like- me of Kevin Coella in terms of like general demeanor, and then he's, he can fix anything and do anything. And then Kevin, we're jumping ahead here, but he does basically he has a device, superhero device, right, that he uses to take over every screen so they can get in undetected. Do you know what he plays, Kevin? Is it Queen? No, he plays. Oh, hold on. Kevin, can you put yourself on the popcorn machine, please? You're so okay. yellow. Kevin, he plays. Uh, uh, let me. I open up the. Yeah, uh, uh, El Chuplin, the, the guy, the the guy with the CH on his chest, the heart, the the superhero that we liked that was in Fortnite. Yeah, remember, fuck, El Chup, uh, no, uh, El Chuplin, in, Colorado. I checked that. Damn, I mean, you're I'm reading it. It's El Chuplin, Colorado. Yeah, I mean, that's what it is. Yeah, but uh, El Chaplin, Chaplin. But the guy Chaplin, with the, Chaplin. Chaplin. There you there go. Thank you for the pronunciation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He plays the card. He plays like a claymation cartoon version of that. It made me think of you. And then of course he listens to Selena, which made me think of Andy. Would you believe Kevin that the second post credit scene Wanda. is just them watching that? And that was it. We waited through the whole credits for that. Do we get the caterpillar at all? No, the caterpillar didn't no, return. Instead you get you get Ted Cord. If my daughter is listening, I'm not dead. Who is the voice on that? Did we catch it? No, because it's nobody. It was very garbled on purpose, so it could be anybody. <laughs> uh, when they showed the like the uh, either a weathered photo or a weathered a drawing, the painting, mm. I looked at. It, I'm like, oh, that looks like Ryan Reynolds. They're gonna make Ryan Reynolds this guy just for this one thing to Ted pop up Ford. and do it. Ted, Ted Cord, because you know, Ford. you know, Blue Beetle goes with Booster Gold, but they all run together with Green Lantern, so I thought it might be a fun little thing there, but they don't have any fun. They spent all their money on George Clooney. (laughs) Anyways, um, comes down the thing, uh, goes, uh, they go for tacos. Yeah, we met George Lopez. He's crazy. Uh, We go for tacos. He gets one bite of his taco. His sister blurts it out. They've lost the house. Oh, my God. Cord Industries jacking up the prices around here. They're buying up everything. They're squeezing us out. They're taking over our little part of the city. On top of that, dad had a tar- heart attack. He's got to eat these Tic Tacs all the time. On top of that, they're fucking broke. 25% tip. What are you fucking doing? You shouldn't be eating out. You know what I mean? Like that You're moment. Celebrating. Though. Like yeah, that I moment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because she, oh, no. she goes 25% to these people, you know. Yeah. I like that. He's a good dad. Yeah. He's a good guy. Good guy. Yeah. Good family. Um, and so that, it's like, okay, we go home, and this is where, you know, we're sad about it. We're sad about everything that's happened. You know what I mean? We're losing the house or whatever, and this is going on, and yada, yada, yada. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I forget, this, they go up on the roof. I'm getting to where you got. Let me spin the wheel for one fucking second, all right? I swear to God. And Jesus. And Satan. <laughs> I was I was gonna say I, I couldn't remember. This isn't when he talks to his dad first, and he comes out and dad's having the drink. He's like, "Don't tell mom," and he's wearing the Gotham wall thing. Or Maybe. this might be. We're just tossed in there because they have a couple outdoor scenes that are nice. But then eventually, yeah, he has the beer with his uh, uh, sister, and Hocus they focus too. Hocus focus too. That's no longer referred to as character name or sister. Hocus focus too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, they go up there, and it's like, "Yo, don't worry. I'm gonna make get a job, and I'm gonna make money, and everything's gonna be groovy." What is wrong? What's happening behind me? It just looked like the background shifted, like in a way that gave me an optical illusion. Optical illusion. And guess what? We it's smashed. Yeah, he Kevin said, "We're gonna be rich. This will be one of the houses we have, and they won't be blah 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 blah." And so then we jump ahead and look. He's out on the. He's got a beautiful pad on the water and a cool thing. He's sitting there taking it all in. And guess what? <laughs> this isn't his house. He works there. His sister got him a job. Two moments in trail in the trailer that I wish they didn't show in the trailer. One was this one because yep. it was a real nice setup of. You know, set a punchline of, oh, we're man, he's like, you know what? We're going to fix this. Give me a couple years, and I'm going to be running this or whatever. And then it cuts, and it looks like he's running this awesome place, and it's revealed how he actually works there. And then later, the grandma with the, the minigun. Oh, Two moments that, no that, that are not, like, the funniest or most creative things ever, but, like, I think that they worked in the tone of this movie. And, like, it would have been good moments, but seeing them already, I was like, ah, just lessened it. Just, just enough that I was like, eh. You were about to say something, Nick. Uh, No, no. Cool. Yeah. And so what we find, of course, is they're scraping gum off the thing. It's funny. This is, uh, I'm sorry. Hocus Pocus 2 keeps putting the gum back. And she's like, this is job security. I was like, that's actually pretty funny. I like her. I like them. They I had like a great their dynamic. dynamic. And yeah. I, liked, I didn't like this scene in the trailer, the, eh, but like in this, I thought it worked. 
I thought maybe the effects were better too because they didn't look good in the trailer. IMO. Anyways, though, uh, they're like, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then he's like looking around and then uh, Susan Sarandon shows up and she's kind of openly talking about some of the fucked up shit. And she's got uh, Omac, even though he's not Omac yet, there and he's got the the prongs in the back of his neck or whatever. And we've seen him in, in Antarctica at the WAP or two. Mm-hmm. Prongs in the back of his neck. And they walk in and they're bitching about like whatever they're about to do or some evil shit. We're going to do evil shit. We're going to clone and, evil and robots. Jaime's like, yo, hey, she ignores him or whatever. And then it's like, okay, cool. And then the, uh, Hocus Pocus 2's like, all right, let's go inside. I got to take a shit. And she's and he's like, well, you can, there's a bathroom out here. And she's like, I don't want to poop in fucking luxury. luxury. Very funny. Very funny. Very funny stuff. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. You, That's you, Nick's you, life, man. Yeah. I've been with Nick many times where he's so made she me goes go to a there. second Starbucks so that he could poop. Like she goes in there to poop. Uh, he stays outside, of course. Uh, when Susan Sarandon comes back in, uh, so does uh, the one and only Jenny Cord. We get the introduction of her. Oh, my favorite niece. I didn't know you were here. What's going on? And we got a little bit of the backstory, but we'll just toss it all out here, right? That she's Ted Cord's daughter. Ted Cord disappeared. Uh, nobody knows what's up with that. That's when Susan Sarandon took it back over. It, it, we'll later get the thing from her about how it was kind of, you know, sexist that, you know, her dad was running the company with Susan Sarandon. And then when he died, he left it all to Ted Cord. Ted Cord was actually a good person and was like, you know what? We're not going to make weapons. We're going to make good stuff and make the world better. And then he disappeared and the Susan Sarandon took it back over. And you're like, okay, well, Susan Sarandon clearly had him killed or did something. I'm sure this will be a big plot point eventually rather than just fighting a fucking red blue beetle at the end no not so much that's not we're going with this picture um okay cool so that's all there and then you know and jenny's like i so fucking i forget if she has the newspaper or the phone or something she's like you're selling weapons to be and you're being a bad person again you're back in the bad people mm-hmm. business and this whole thing sounds a lot like iron man doesn't it uh and she's like yep. yeah well fuck you nobody cares about you you got a board seat because you're dead daddy and i don't give a shit what you have to say and you should be scared of me i guess yeah i guess it's interesting because like was what she was doing illegal so well, kind of, like, kind of, right? I don't know. I mean, it was, it was, it, it was made- getting back into weapons manufacture very legal. Using an alien technology and trying to siphon off the thing and, and plug it into people. I don't. know. I mean, if did she have? Uh, oh man, I'm just gonna keep calling him Omac because we really don't ever get his name. I mean, we had it there for two seconds, but like Omac, does he care? Did he want to do it? I don't know. He's been a ki- with her since he was a kid. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he's like, like, he's a fucked up shit. I'm sorry, there's he's fucked a- up shit here. Real Susan Sarandon's shit. a bad person. Oh, very, very bad. I'm sure she's done a lot of illegal things. Oh, sure, 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 sure. I'm just thinking, like, I don't know. There, there was like a, a, a reason for her to be like, "Hey, don't talk about this." But I was like, "Why? You're a massive corporation, and you're getting back into being a military, like, I don't know, selling arms. Like, it's not illegal, unfortunately. Yeah, it's a bad look, though, right? Because like when they get there, there's the whole like I liked it better. We're Iron building a better tomorrow here, at Cord Industry. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I just like you know you, you can't help but if draw Apple's a parallel doing with... this. Apple wouldn't want us to know. They want to keep it quiet as possible. That's fair. I get that. I guess fair. And maybe I'm wrong about this, and I, I could be very naive about this, but um, I, I wouldn't expect Apple, no matter how bad they get, to send like a mili- militarized strike force with a helicopter and a crazy laser shooter to this random community. And, yeah, like, but remember that one time maybe, that kid stole the iPhone four or whatever it is. Like walked away with it. You're bringing it up real good points. Out, You're bringing up real good points. And also, like to that, it was, I think, the belief that nobody cares about the poor people in this. Yeah, city. for sure. So nobody for sure. would even be. I was just eye. shocked that that Cord didn't give a, a crap about being seen by anybody there because it was like this is aggressive. And yeah. why well, do you public. figure they're trying to force those people out and take over again? I don't think this is not one of my Greg references because I've made this reference in gesture, you know, my craziness before sure. there was a lot of Ilian Gonzalez uh, imagery in that when they killed the lights, the, the strike team finally came in and when they busted into the bedroom where the family was, the way they framed it and the way the light was, was very reminiscent of at least your mental picture of that one famous photo of them getting alien out of a closet from his uh, yeah. uncle or aunt or whatever. Well, I mean, there's even a moment where she yells round them up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like, I'm, for sure, for sure. Yeah, right. these people to them are less than human, and I think that's yeah. the whole thing. I, that was actually, it's interesting because that was actually not a criticism of mine, but something I noticed, I think it was budgetary, was that they were supposed to have this, this area was supposed to be sort of like vast, right? They talk about how like this is a big community, and I think the set itself was so blocked off, you can't help to think like this is only three square blocks of a city. Yeah. I wish when that had happened, you had seen uh, like they had the budget, another 50 million to show everyone else in their other houses, like more shit, dilapidated we, houses shoved on top. Well, of just like we, I think we see at one point, like somebody shuts the door and locks it or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, but like so. then at the end of the movie, she goes, Oh, the whole the everyone's here. here. And it's 10 <laughs> people. Yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a bummer. Right. Cause it, cause that, that community aspect, the communal aspect, the familiar aspect of it, that was the part that was, to me, like the most unique about it, and I wish they could have hammered that home a little bit more. 
Ah, uh, so anyways, yeah, you should be scared of me, and I'm gonna do whatever the fuck I want, but there's a party tonight, and you should come to it, or whatever, or tomorrow night, I forget if it's tonight or tomorrow night, doesn't matter. Uh, cool, alright, whatever, bye. And the, then, uh, then she starts to push her around a bit, and then uh, they invite, the big bad guy's about to get involved, Omac. But Jaime, because he's got the heart of a hero, steps up, he's like, hey, you, hey, you, you get your goddamn hands yeah, off her. Get your hands off her. Man. And, uh, his sister comes out about, or, I'm sorry, uh, Hocus Pocus 2 comes out about this time, she's like, I blew that bathroom up with the shit, oh no! And then they both get fired. Yeah. And so then they go outside and they have to wait 45 minutes for an Uber. And then Jenny leaves and sh they stop to talk for a second. And Jenny's like, you know what, Jaime, uh, come on by tomorrow to Cord Industries and I'll, I'll see about getting you placed in a job somewhere else. And so then Jaime's like, yeah. And then, and then Hocus Pocus Sue's like, she was into you, I think. And he's like, oh, no way. And then uh, they go home. And then uh, he writes out a million texts and deletes them or whatever. And then he talks to his dad outside. His dad That's talks about, yeah. like, this is the moment I'm meant to be here for. And everything will be okay. And us being together is the only thing that matters. F family. And I was like, that's a dope whole thing. And then I forget what exactly happened. But he got the balls from that conversation to send his little thing. Like, I'll see you tomorrow, Jenny. Which is weird because she never responds to him. A. B, she said, come by tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Why does he need to send another text to her? Just go by tomorrow. I, I mean, he wants yeah. to talk to her, you know. Gets to going. Is something wrong with your eye? What's happening with your eye? I mean, imagine if you had an available, very attractive woman millionaire suddenly give you her, her number. Oh, I'd be like, I, yeah, she's. You wouldn't just let that lie. You'd be like, oh, yo, heads I, up, I am coming tomorrow and I would like a position. Uh, and so he shows up and he's got his whole family with him and he's wearing his, like, you know, little debate outfit, his khakis, his blue shirt, his blue blazer. Yeah, very Spider Man homecoming. Very Spider Man homecoming, even with the crest on the blazer. Mm -hmm. But the family embarrasses him, and they're all cute. Classic. Like, they're all out there with their car and honking and stuff. The cucaracha horn. Yeah, of course you got to have it as, as featured in Ant Man. Um, yes. And so you know he walks in there and he goes up to the front desk and the woman's kind of racist to him and calls him Jamie and like this that and the other. And then he she's like, well you just sit over there and do your fucking thing, kid. Okay. And he's like, okay. So then we go upstairs, and uh, this one person leaves a lab, and then and this person looks exactly like Steve Zaragoza. Steve should have gotten this role. I'm not saying this person mm -hmm. did a bad job, but this man is just copying Steve Zaragoza mm -hmm. at, every, at, at every point. This man, another example of this movie, taking a turn I didn't expect at any point that made me fucking laugh at how bad it is that it's good. The Sanchez thing? His death. His fucking <laughs> death. <laughs> Brutal. That did not need to happen. Uh, I and did happen. not need to happen the way that it His did. death we'll was, get it, to it. Was very, it was very much like the indie... Let me go. I want this. Ah! <laughs> You're like, oh, you instantly regretted that one, didn't you, chief? <laughs> Anyways, uh, he walks out, and a, a person bumps into them, and guess what? That person stole the car. Oh, my God. It's Jenny, ladies and gentlemen. Jenny buzzes herself in there, and she goes in there, and she snoops around. What she find? Oh, my God. They found the blue fucking beetle scare. Oh, my God. It's the blue beetle. Oh, my God. How did, the uh, blue question. fucking beetle. Logistical question. Yeah. How did he get back in the lamp? I believe there was a... Ooh. <laughs> Come on. Uh, maybe he had, a, he had a code too. You know, he got the key thing, but he got a code thing too. Oh, I think it's like a retinal scan. Whatever you want to do. Yeah. You know, how, what do you want to get in? It's just one of those things where you think he'd go like this. Can't get back in the lab. Card's not there. Oh, that's when I sound the alarm. But they had. But the, I mean, maybe at that beat. point you don't sound the alarm. I mean, I'm with you. You're right. You're raising a good point here. Maybe she didn't let the door close all the way. I forget what we saw. She put a little one of those little door stoppers. She just dropped the card outside the door. door. You know what I mean? Right back in his pocket. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. I like. I will say. I like the uh, character design of the, the outfits, like the hazmat. Yeah, yeah cool. wearing. Very, very cool. Yeah. Uh, she puts the. the she here. She knows she's got to get out of there. She looks around. Guess what? A big belly burger there. Yeah, that's right. We will get all the important DC references. Yeah, we saw a LexCorp building as well. They showed that like ten thousand times. Uh, yeah, the LexCorp thing was cool. There, we yeah, saw that. A lot of we stuff. saw Ace Chemicals. But uh, uh big belly. What? Uh, it's just. A, it's, it's like the what? McDonald's. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's just it's it's from the a DC flash, movie. right? It's a flash. Always. It's about everywhere. That. No, it's it's yeah. Superman. It's everyone. Worry about that. Um. Bye, Nick. Uh, what the, uh, there was another one, another building outside that wasn't like scoring. It wasn't these chemicals and it's escaping me, but we caught the, yeah. So, I mean, I guess like, let, let's talk about this real quick. What were the, the references DCU or otherwise? Cause we got the different buildings, different things, Gotham, uh, on the, the sweatshirt and stuff. Yeah. They, uh, I missed this, but Roger was saying, uh, I guess it was when I went to the bathroom that the flash was mentioned and yeah. Yeah, yeah, I forget it, what I forget what the context was anymore. But a Batman, uh, got, uh, Bruce mentioned. Wayne was mentioned, but it was Spanish. I didn't understand what was being said around okay. it. Uh, it was Superman and Metropolis are mentioned. Like it's it's the DC you stuff know, there. Yeah, but yeah. I, another credit to this movie is that like it stands alone. 
Like those sure. references weren't like actually referencing events. It was more just like no, yeah, they, they exist in this world, and that's what's yeah. going on. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, we will get give you no reason to differentiate Ted Cord being a millionaire from Bruce Wayne being a millionaire. I thought that was weird because mm. Ted Cord was always kind of a joke millionaire in the comics. Mm. That was like his thing. He was he was rich or whatever. But even the Blue Beetle was kind of a joke. So it was like a weird thing, I guess. That it was just like oh, he's just. It, they kind of reference it with his weapons sometimes not working. Oh, this looks like what I would do if I had 80 or if I was a millionaire with ADHD or whatever. Yeah. But it was like his shit still worked really good. So it was like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, he and was able to build a holographic shield that yeah. could stop bullets. Pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so she leaves with the big belly burger scarab. Uh, as she leaves, you know, uh, Jaime sees her coming down. And then back in the thing, Steve Zaragoza, uh, two. Uh, goes in there and he's like, wait a second, the scarab's missing. Oh no, and he's gonna eat his burger. Burger looks good too. Uh, he's gonna eat his burger. He oh. sounds the alarm. The alarm goes off. Shut the doors. Lock everything down. You know what I mean? And then and Jaime finally catches up to Jenny. He's like, yo, hey. She's like, you do anything for a job? You said you do anything for a job, right? You do anything? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll do anything. She's like, take this. Don't open it. Don't look at it. Don't touch it. Don't smell it. Don't touch it. Don't lick it. Take it, and I'll I'll catch up with you later. And he goes, okay. And she points him out the door, and then grabs the security that was about to shut down those doors. Like you with me, and then on then blah, blah blah. The blocking of all this threw me off. Go for what would be harder for you to do? If someone said, don't look at this and don't lick it, <laughs> what would be harder for you to do? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because you'd be like, why, <laughs> why not lick why it? I lick it? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, I'm opening up and I'm more, I got to see, is this food? Is this, you know what I mean? Well, I kind of want to lick it. Yeah. The yeah. scene before she runs into to Jaime there, she's just, uh, they're like, lock it all down. Lock the, the building down. Like the, the scarab is, or the, the, you know, whatever. The, they reference it without saying it. They're like, it's missing. Let's figure this out. And then she just kind of gives it to him and he walks out the door. Like, it, I felt like they shouldn't have had that line if they were going to allow that to happen, you know? Because then she gets into kind of boss mode and it's just like, do this and lock that down after she hands it to him. But, like, it was just really clunky there for me. Yeah, yeah it was. Uh, uh, you, when you when you say, lock all the exits, I'm expecting this, like, incredibly futuristic building to be like, burr, burr, yeah. burr. and so, like, when it was, like, you're in a hotel guys, lobby, like, all right. You guys casually coming down the stairs as people still continue to leave. Not a, everybody fucking stop. Right you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. yeah. I agree with that part. Uh, you know, she does that. Jaime leaves. Goes home. We get to, you know, we get that. Well, we saw the security cameras following uh, her. Uh, we get uh, back, though, to the Jaime, uh, the Reyes residence. And they say, well, what do you think it is? Well, and open it. And they, they you know, they, Jaime was going to do the right thing, but they coax him out of it. And he opens it up. And it's just a fucking thing. And they toss it around. And they move it around. Like, oh, my God. What the was fucking stupid? And they play pass it around with a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And finally, like, uh, he holds it. And it turns on, man. This beetle comes to life. And it's like, dip -a -dip -a -dip. And he's like, oh, my God. So I and then it jumps on his face. And it's like on his face. It, dude, this is a, one of the first scenes in the movie of just like, Hey, this is like kind of fun and lighthearted. And then, like, it is graphic as hell. And George, it goes on a while. George, it goes on a very long while of him just getting, like, his body is getting wrecked. And George Lopez is just screaming, It went up his ass. And yeah. it's like, A lot of asshole jokes. This man. is, this is not, not, not funny. Bubble, so. <laughs> you know, like, there's something about the energy that I'm like, I, I'm it, here for this. There is, there is a level of I lunacy. You feel it inside me. <laughs> a level of, like, ridiculous lunacy and, like, horror aspects of some of this film that, I'm kind of there for. Yeah. Because it kind of feels like a fever dream where you're like, I don't know what's happening. There's so many elements they're throwing out and a lot of them are so off that I'm like, where's it going to go next? Yeah. How hard are we going to go with this? The, the goo going into his face, I'm like, that's horrifying. Horrifying. If you're a child watching this, this is inappropriate for you. But if you're an adult man watching it, you want the goo in his face. I feel like I need to say something to you guys just for my own edification Please. on this. I was just looking up the... The, the actors in the family because mm -hmm. like, I, I don't know where a lot of them are from and i think the mom and i could be wrong about this but i think the mom was the lady they find in the jungle in predator remember predator the original predator yeah she's this lady but she remember where he's like enough fucking around like no. what is this remember and she goes i don't know what it was but it, like i saw it bleed she tells him like she's the cat yeah. the, the one yeah. that they, they take prisoner yeah, you're uh -huh. right. You're That's right. It is. Wow, dude. Good job. She was also Holy in Bread shit. and Roses and Nine Lives. I don't know what those movies Please don't are. bring that kind of useless information. I fucking hate you so Please. goddamn much. Talk Just about Bigglesboo or whatever the fuck that Susan Sarandon movie is. Uh, okay. As we said, Bill, Bill Durham. Durham. <laughs> and by the way, I forgot the best part. It's because they're the Durham they Bulls. Fuck. Oh, okay. The Bulls of Durham. Bull okay. Durham. Got it. Shut but it's up. also bullshit, kind of. You should watch it tonight. Report back to me. Oh, I want yeah, a 15 yeah. page yeah, book report on it. <laughs> I want you to wrap the book in, like, uh, you know, an old paper, paper bag, bag like yeah. you used to. Yeah, yeah perfect. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, did your did you ever have like the things where like the local businesses like put their ads on it and sold it to you that way? Yeah, I flipped it inside it, out. Yeah. Oh, nice. Wow. Then you can draw on them. Yeah. Yeah. There it is, Bill Durham. It's a fucking good movie. Anyways, Jaime's getting uh, penetrated by the Beatle. Damn. You know I mean? Right up, up there, it's doing that thing. Every screaming. George Lopez gets electrocuted. People are going, finally, yeah, it goes into him and then starts glowing out his back and then the goo and then into the Blue Beetle suit. You know and love. It's shoving its tendrils like Spider Man, uh, Iron Spider, into the ceiling. Uh, you know, all hell's breaking loose. He lands. He's like, all right, I got it. I think I got it. You know, it's, I'm, I'm okay. And then the thing's like, now time to test the fucking suit. Flies him through the roof, which we've seen in the trailer. Up, up, and away. We're up into space. I'm in space. We come all the way down to the. Oh my, we're gonna smash. We're gonna die. Oh, the emergency stop works. <laughs> and then we're up. We're flying, <laughs> we're fucking around. Just fucking. And it's a movie, so I don't know why I'm questioning things like this, but I'm watching it, so I am. The family just doesn't care. The family, the mom on the phone to uh, cops. Yeah, right. Hey, our son's missing. Some weird tech just flew him into space. Seems weirdly calm about it. Like she cares a little bit, but in the background, the dad's just like fixing the table that he broke. Yeah. And like the the sister and grandma and uncle are all just kind of talking like, hey, that was kind of weird, right? Your fucking son is gone. He, you just saw him get penetrated by this beetle mm -hmm. and then flown away. You don't know where he is. Weirdly calm. Weirdly not giving a shit yeah. about this whole situation. They need to be okay. But why? I mean, these people lived through the Metropolis incident. You know what I mean? Yeah. Did they? These fucking Kryptonian. And depending on where Panorama <laughs> City is or whatever, what was it called? Uh, pal 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 Palmera. Palmera. Palmera City is. It could be right across the bay from Gotham City. You're right. We don't know. Excellent, excellent points all around. We don't I don't know, know if you know that the, a giant fucking starfish popped up in uh, South America or whatever. They had to fight that thing. People were aware. It's just fucked in this universe. It's mm -hmm. not nearly as bad as the blip. Those goddamn, you know what I mean? Jesus Christ. Yeah, everybody gets, don't get me started. I won't. Don't get me started. I really won't. So anyways, there's a bunch of fucking tests on this Jaime shit. Um, and then he comes home, like you're saying, to pick that up. Maybe we did an interstitial where Susan Sarandon's like, find the fucking scarab. Is this, I'm the, sure part, is this the part with the stoners? Like, he hasn't hit me yet. And yeah. He cuts the bus. Yeah, he cuts I the like bus. The, I like that bus sequence where he cuts through and he's just looking at the bus getting split like a banana. Yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. That was cool. But, you know, Ruined thing, in the trailer. I know but. we're watching a movie, but I'm like, has anyone ever been on a bus before? Like, people are dead yeah, if that happens. 100%. There's no way someone's not standing on this bus. But then here we are back to it's a comic book. I, 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 and I'm not oh, saying that's an app for everything, I, but I'm just like, no, that's the... Right, a dollar right. for every time a blue beetle cut through a Bart that I was on? Or a Muni that I was on? I don't even know what they're called. <laughs> I don't take them. Uh, <laughs> write down, because it's scary. He comes home... And uh, collapses, and the suit goes away, and he's nudie. He's just naked. Yeah. He's got his balls. A recurring out. joke in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's got all talking dick. about his balls. The little tiny dick. Lo his real little. Tiny Lopez dick. says because it's cold, because his, his peach leak is cold. Nana, Nana like, laughs oh. just like when he was a baby. Mm -hmm. She go, and the mom goes, "No, his dad has that little dick too." Yeah, there's a That's lot good. of dick talk. <laughs> like an unexpected amount of dick talk. Tons of dick talk. Well, eventually, yeah, he wakes up and he realizes he's naked and he freaks out and he runs into his room and then he looks in the mirror and finds out that the beetle is embedded in him and he freaks out about that and he comes out. And it, of course, it's set up as, well, you got to go find Jenny. She's, she knows what's up. You go back to Court Industries. So while everybody bitches and moans about that, he takes Taco the truck. This is when George Lopez, performance of his lifetime, falling into the corner by the China cabinet. Incredible. Uh, we then go to Court Industries. And very conveniently, Jenny's on the street <laughs> trying to escape Court Industries. Yo, what, what a, oh, what my a, God, guys. <laughs> I'm going to drive up. It's a gigantic. Like, imagine driving up to the Apple fucking halo. You're like, I got to find uh, who's not Steve Jobs, but Steve Jobs now. Tim Cook. Tim, I got to find Tim Cook. Tim Cook oh, walking right outside, creeping around, looking Perfect for a ride. Timing. Oh, yeah, trying so cars. That is that is very lazy riding. Oh, she gets in honest. and then they immediately start shooting. I did like the point there when she had been like going. He's like, "Why well, he's trying to talk?" And then you should have led with the guns. Yeah, but they drive away. Guns. They get away. They get away from him. No problem. Do they get away? I thought he fights. This isn't where he fights all that guy. Oh, Mac for the first time. Fucking no, man. Sure. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Oh, Mac catches up to them and they they have their first fight. Um, I and, thought this guy was at least imposing. I oh think yeah, the actor no. did a good job. I like the tech of the arm. I like a lot of that stuff. Again, it looked cool. Some of the choreography was was pretty cool. Fine. I, it, Fine, fine. It was like, you know, again, it, I don't think much of it was like, we've seen so much worse. Like, we've seen Black Adam. We've seen a lot of things that are like, hey, this Hierarchy just isn't power. even interesting to watch. Right. This, I feel like the back and forth, the like the quips and things and what was going on, the set 
themselves like not that bad um but i was uh really like caught up with the consistencies or lack thereof of his him getting damaged because like i think we might be wrong hmm? not that i'm trying to be rude to you guys but i like being right Mm -hmm. is that no remember because this is when they come back to get the watch because uh, oh, you're Hawkeye right. has to throw the thing. Ladies yeah, and gentlemen, right. this is why I'm the plot synopsis. Use the plot synopsis. Sexy. Sexy. Oh. Where are we going? Stewart. <laughs> the PSSSS. Everyone. <laughs> PSSS, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the piss. Anyways, I'm the piss. Uh, <laughs> they go home and she explains that like, you know, wow, this is fucking crazy. The scarab's been, we've been looking for it. My dad disappeared for it. And that's the thing. And that's rad that you have the scarab, but it's scary that you have the scarab because the scarab's crazy. And we don't know. And like, you might have to die to get it off, but we're not sure. We don't know that. Maybe we didn't say that yet, but guess what? I got ideas on how we could fix this. But the first thing we need to just go back there. I need something from the office. And they're like, all right, cool. This won't. Then they go back to the office. This is where George Lopez makes his little thing that it takes over and puts uh, ch- uh, whatever the CH superhero on the screens. And then they get the thing and it's an old watch. And they're like, okay, that's fine. And then they get out and that's when dude shows up. All the stuff we just talked about happened. They fight. This is when the suit wants to kill him. And Jaime's like, no, we don't kill. Yeah. So the Blue Beetle suit, the AI uh, voiced by Becky G, wants to kill Olmec. Mm-hmm. Um, from Legends of the Hidden Temple. And no Jaime's like, I'm not, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. And he's trying to like learn how to use this suit. We've seen this scene a million fucking times. I'll like, take over. I'll Spider-Man, see. activate instant kill. Don't do that. Like th- that's what's fucking happening here. But then at one point earlier than this, when he's doing the flight test shit, he's Nathan Drake style from Uncharted 4 underneath this like bridge, bouncing into every one of the fucking pillars, getting his fucking shit kicked in. Yeah. And he's just totally fucking okay. And then in this fight, he gets thrown at a car, his head hits it, and he gets concussed. Yeah. And the AI is like, you have been concussed. Well, and then later he gets shot at a bunch of times. He's like, I'm, I'm bulletproof. bulletproof. What the fuck? There was a moment, though, where, like, the suit heals him. So he, him getting concussed. The closer they get, the deeper they get into the symbiosis. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which mm-hmm. makes sense. Okay. But... Yes, I think to your point, and you made this point earlier, is that a suit that can do anything and has no rules gets boring very quickly. And that's where I found myself. I'm like, how is he shooting these charged bolts? And do they just stay around forever? And like, yeah. where's this yeah. Where's yeah. this material yeah. coming from? Yeah. Does this suit I, just take it from a it's different a dimension? It's a big missed opportunity for me of to set yourself apart. Hey, I'm this AI. I'm not Venom. I'm not Karen. I'm some, you know, I do this and I'm trying to do that. And like have a montage of like, all right, so what can I do? You can make these hard light constructs. Right. Here are the rules. What Any, can I do? Anything yeah. you can imagine, you what can is do. My, what All is right, my... I made this. Like he fucking has a Final Fantasy thing he picks up and looks at, and like, you know what I mean? Like, and 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 to that point, what can't I do? What's my kryptonite? What is the one thing that I can't do? And then that's what the movie is really missing. And that's why the third act gets really boring. Is that and inevitably, and I know they have the, the moment with his dad, and he's supposed to just kind of, I guess, get in touch with the sim, this, like, finish the symbiosis or like the, you know, the combination of the two. But at the end of the day, he just starts punching harder. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he didn't really mm-hmm. set up any rules would, yeah. for this character at all, other than he's got to just kind of figure out how the suit works and then punch harder. He needed a moment where it was like, these are the rules. This is the one weakness of the suit, and guess what? The bad guy has that weakness, and well, whatever that weakness is, they have to overcome. You gotta, oh, you gotta learn that in your B story. What, what are we doing? The claw. claw. His weakness was the claw, remember? What the fuck was the claw? It was the red version of some of the Blue Beetle shit or some shit. Remember? It was pink, though. Yo, yeah, I'm red with you. I'm Guys, with you, you like... need to watch this movie just to fucking see the claw. Like, that, whatever, ah. you, whatever you're hearing right now, whatever you think Greg's talking about, I guarantee you it's stupider. I <laughs> guarantee well, I, I you I'm with you. Of, I, 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 of course, uh, ever since you talked about punching harder, I, I see it all the time now in movies. And that, uh, this is literally that. And it would have been... So much stronger, I feel, to have set up, again, not the Venom thing, but the more your new partner that you don't want thing from a cop movie with the AI and have it be while talking to your dad, him be like, the power is family. Like, this thing is your family now, whatever whatever they call it. Uh, Kaji? Kaji. Kaji Kaji is your family now. You know, that kind of thing. So it's like, that's why it kicks in. Oh, we're on the same page. We're the same thing. Like... I, I, you saved me and you saved somebody else. So I'm thinking then. They, I think they were trying to drive that home. I think they were trying to drive home that the dad was like, hey, this is your destiny. And like, you just have to accept it. But it just didn't work for me. An example of it working, just so we're on the same page, is the sequence in Ragnarok where his dad's like, you're trying to save your home. But, but, uh, God damn it. What's you the, the God of Hammers? What's the place where they're from? Not Asgard. Asgard. But he's like, Asgard is not, doesn't have to be here. It's, it's not a place. It's a people. It's a people. Right. Yeah. 
and he realizes, shit, the entire time I've been fighting for this, I've been fighting for my people, but I, I, I can take them anywhere. The way to overcome the enemy is to fucking let Asgard die. That's a fucking great moment. And we never have anywhere close to that, that revelation here. So that by the end of it, when he beats the, the bad guy, you're like, we just fought longer. And, and, we did. and my big, if we did fight longer, my bigger problem with this too is that they set it up with the, the sequence of him talking to his, his dad and all this stuff. And, and we see, we know where he is. He's captured and all this shit. There's the scene of them fucking touching him fingers, touching the suit yeah. and all this stuff. The that should have been, I mean, it wouldn't have been though. good, but it would have at least been their attempt at that, that Thor moment. But instead, there's like 15 more minutes after the movie before he has his power up moment. Yeah. He's off as fuck. Yeah, power. right. Yeah, he comes out. We're united. Oh, the suit's rebooting. Like, what? what the fuck? Y'all set us up with this and then just... All right. Yeah, we needed that. We needed that. What are you the god of again? And yeah. bam, 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 Come on. Just, oh, come on. We're out. Right, back to it, Greg. Anyways, they, you know, he doesn't kill the, th the guy, but then, uh, you know, that was a stupid move. Kill bad guys. If you ever, ladies and gentlemen, if you get superpowers, I'm giving you carte blanche if you're a good guy to kill the bad guys. And not just like, oh, man. Well, I parked people. illegally. Huh? Yeah. Superman kills people, so it's cool. Exactly. Batman or, kills people. It's fine. Everyone with guns. People. Yeah. Literally... Gun. The thing he swore he would never. He's yeah. using them. But again, Greg, you're saying all of this, and like, George Lopez kills people. Yeah. <laughs> in this fucking movie. Right. Grandma kills people in this Grandma fucking kills movie. A lot of people. <laughs> it's like, Jaime really doesn't have the Kent moral backing of like, you know, that he shouldn't, but he's like, and I don't mean that like he's a dartbag. I just mean that like, the rest of the family understands if someone's threatening your family, you put them fucking down. Put them down. Jaime's like, I'm not down. gonna kill this guy, and it immediately blows up in his face. I'm like, what call? Because I mean, let's let's call it. Let's yeah. call it like it is. Jaime, your dad's death is on your hands. Yeah, you could have killed this dude right there. Yeah, could have you know what I mean. It. You're Spider-Man right there. You let the killer go, and he got Uncle Ben. Well, congratulations, Peter. Hi, man. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, man. Anyways, back Peter. to it. Uh, so yeah, he uh, he's <laughs> you know they they get out of this one by the skin of their teeth, and they're like, all right, cool. What now? We got to go. Yes, we're going to go to Ted Cord's house. We need the thing. Ted Quarters. The Ted Cord. Oh, that's good. Very sick. <laughs> we're going to go to HQ. This man mansion looks just like the the Wayne mansion uh, from Flash. We're going to go there. Nobody goes here anymore. We need the things here really? to do the stuff. To scare that's where all the scarab stuff is. Nobody goes. I, I actually they never found it there. I thought that I forgot that there's one moment where the helicopter flies. I was like, over. yeah, they found and it. Nobody thought to look at this massive, like nobody has surveillance on this thing. But I love this one moment that got me a laugh out loud here. And it's George Lopez. The star spiral staircase starts going down and George it's, Lopez is like, yeah, it's normal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they use the <laughs> watch. Like, that's so funny. To get yeah. in, we go into the Blue Beetle cave. We get the suits. We get all the old tech. We see all the Ted Cord stuff. We see his obsession love with Scarab. Yeah, it's all. Awesome. I think it's cool. All the paintings, really cool. the mom's paintings. Love how that came yeah. back into it. Yeah. This is this is this is the moment where uh, the Jenny character for me kind of starts to take life. I think everything up until that point was just so cookie cutter and generic that I don't think it was a lot for the actress to, to sink her teeth into. We have some good scenes here, and again, I, they're fine. They work well together, but I still I still don't buy her and 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 Jaime as like the romantic couple. I don't know what it well, is I think about again, it. It, like, just, it just feels like it was just so off for me. I feel like it's one of those that Jaime is so inexperienced. You know what I mean? It's, like I, he's such know, a, yeah. he's never, I don't think ever had a girlfriend. But, so he, like but it's, it's interesting because I think they're supposed to be somewhat contemporaries and she just reads as so much like more mature than him. Yeah. But I mean, she's like running court industries and even yeah. before she's running, running, she's on the board and doing the stuff. Like she had a different upbringing. I it, ju I ju it just feels like to me, like, I don't know. It's, it's so hard when you get into these sort of like romanticized Kind of like high schoolish uh, love stories that a lot of comic books have when you have younger yeah, yeah. characters, and he's like he re he re just read so young to me and so immature I that mean, she would read like she was in her thirties, and it would be just really weird for her to be like, "Hey, I kind of like you romantically." Let me just ask you this, okay? Sure. If Andy Cortez actually got Selena Gomez's phone number, you don't think it would be this relationship? You don't think this is how it would go? I Selena think Selena Gomez is like totally over this dude, but like also like kind of yeah, you're, you're funny though. Um, yeah, but I don't, like, I, but I, stream tonight. he needs easily, the sensei, Nick. This is the problem. He needs Johnny Lawrence. It does Just like Andy needs you. Exactly. Because if not, I could easily see Selena Gomez being like, Andy, uh, let's go out for dinner. And then midway. He's like, dinner, I just had some hot fries. I can't. Yeah. He's like, I went to the, the Cajun place in the corner of my house and I just, uh, I got, I want to take you to a five-star restaurant. Ah, well, they no, only got beanless chili. Does that here. involve me leaving my home? Yeah. Then no. I'm going to text Andy about my Ted Quarters pun because I thought that was good. That was a really good yeah. pun. He would have liked it. Anyway, he also told that Greg down is there. We're going to do. 
<laughs> we're gonna go and we're gonna uh, find out what the fuck's up with the scarab. See if there's a way to remove it. Great. We turn on these old computers. George Le- Lopez will crack it, but this will take time. Great. You stink. Uh, Jaime goes up there. We see that the scarabs can uh, heal his mm. face. Uh, he gets into the old fucking Ted Cord uh, athletic outfit. Very fun from the comics. Nice throwback. Sits down, gets the backstory on her dad disappearing, her mom dying, all this other stuff. Okay, cool. Uh, they're about to lean in to kiss. George Lopez comes in, and this is a fun one. It's nothing. <laughs> her mom died. <laughs> like I like that. I like that yeah. little exchange. I enjoyed that. It made me laugh. And then... Uh, Guess what? Come back downstairs. Here's all the information and the thing and the stuff and what's going you gotta on. Gotta die to get this out of you. What? No, I, I, I can't. Again, be another moment where it's like, okay, we're setting this up. You gotta die to get this thing off you. Yeah. A moment where it's like, as from my perspective, I'm thinking to myself, oh, so he's got to, he's gonna have to make a choice at some point to die and then or to say no. Like the thing gets off him and he goes, I oh no, I want to go. I really want you back. I need you back, Beats. Something like that, but no, it's just, okay. Uh, so we go to the roof to clear our heads. Uh, we but come then he doesn't there. have to die because she doesn't need to get the thing off of him. No, he's she just needs to it. tap into the fucking thing in the back of his head. You know what I mean? No. At a certain point when you say a character needs to die. Well, he, for the, he for the, for the his bad guy. Again, to, his dad is like, yo, this is your destiny. This is what you're No, no, no. You missed my point. I am sorry. When you set up the fact that, and I could be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong. But he goes, hey, how do I get this thing off of me? And he goes, the only way to get this thing off of you is to die. In my, in my brain, my stupid brain, I go, oh, Susan Sarandon's going to be like, cool. In order to get this off of him and get the thing I want, we got to kill you. But she doesn't. She just hooks him up to the machine. Well, she doesn't. Mm. Yeah, she could have wants- lived is all I'm saying. Mm. It's like, you know what I mean? It's like you have to imagine that there's, there's the, the fucking... You know, the guillotine that's about to chop his head off here and the decision has to be made. But well, instead, I, she's like, boop, just put the USB cord in the back memory, of him. We don't, who cares if yeah. he lives or dies? And I, I, I don't remember it well enough line by line. I don't think she has that information. So it's that she wants to get the well, no, no, but, but But when you're, when you're foreshadowing is what I'm saying. That, that to me is a foreshadowing moment of going, oh, we're going to get to a point where he has to make a choice to like separate mm-hmm. from this thing and die or accept his fate as the Blue Beetle or whatever. And we never have that moment. So this 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 moment of like, oh, you're gonna have to die to get this thing off you is just kind of wasted. It's a, it's set up for a payoff that never happens. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. Again, watch like the movie last coat. night. I'll watch it again. We'll see if I'm wrong in the chat. Let me know. I like this coat. Uh, your coat. I like your coat. Uh, yeah. So then he goes up there to lament how fucked up this is. Then yeah, they, they they'll never find this place. And Susan Serena's chopper flies over. We're like oh shit, they found this place. Yeah, oh no, they found. It. Oh, no. They're heading to my home. Oh fuck! And so uh, I gotta. How do we know? I, they're also heading toward their building. I gotta beetle up. I gotta beetle up right now. I forget how they tip. Uh, they put it all together. Yeah, it does probably- I'm gonna beetle it up, and he can't beetle it up, and he's sitting there. And she's like, More dick jokes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And so finally he's like, oh, you're right. Wait, the thing needs me. So won't let me get hurt. And he runs and jumps. And I'm, I was expecting the, he lands and it doesn't do it. And then maybe again, because he the, said, the Hulk moment. he said he can hear it in his head and we've kind of seen it, but they haven't had a conversation, which is still the most fucking crazy thing to me about setting this movie up. Hey, it, Becky G, how does this whole thing uh, work? It, it, yeah, exactly. It's like when he's saying, and like, like, why not have her interject of like, or say something like suit, beetle, whatever, like scarab, like what's going on? And have her be like, I, oh, da, 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 you know, and have a, a talking thing before they jump and whatever. No. They don't. Instead they we get jump. The same scene flies. we've seen a million times. Woo! Kind of jump and activate it. Like, go. It's like, this was Tobey Maguire and Spider Man 1 in the year 2001. Yeah. Susan Sarandon's troops surround the uh, Reyes residence. Uh, they cut the power. We already kind of talked about this. They breach the door. They shoot the thing. We get the alien Gonzalez thing. They bring them all outside. They at one point hit dad in the face with the butt of the gun. Everybody's crying. Everybody's sad. They get kind of separated. Uh, and then, you know, Jaime shows up and he's like, I'll fucking kill you all. He does that. But he starts shooting shit and blowing shit and fighting and he's doing things and he's, it's actiony. And then like, you know, the, the family gets kind of separated and then dad has a heart attack again. And she's like, yeah. Uh, the, you know, who we spoke to, ah! and that's what distracts Jaime when he's about to fight Susan Sarandon, who was like, Get the claw, get the claw, we need the claw. And then this motherfucker, old mech, just pulls over like the big ass Valkyrie in, in Thor Ragnarok <laughs> and almost hits, the, the helicopter. Almost hits Steve Zaragoza and Susan Sarandon in the face with it, they just fucking pulls it over. And there's this just big glowing, what's the opposite of blue? I guess in this, it's fucking red and pink shit claw 
that just shoots out at him. Did anyone think it's weird though that Susan Sarandon was on this helicopter? It's so yes. fucking weird. This whole scene was just off. Like man. you want Susan Sarandon to be like the Amanda Waller, where she's never she doesn't just get her hands dirty. Yeah, she's the CEO of this fucking. She's Lex. Lex wouldn't be at the scene of a crime. Lex Dude. would have pro 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 or not, uh, probable deniability. Lex would be way far away, so he had plausible deniability of what was going on there, right? She's in the fucking helicopter, like are you caressing this man. Yeah, like, it's I, so am weird. Am I wrong about this? Elevator, like, helicopter. I can't believe that you guys aren't like. Oh no no no! What the, he, she was like fucking feeling well, him I, up I in think the, the weirdest ways. I think the relationship there was, was supposed to be uncomfortable, and so in that regard, they nailed it. Like she was supposed to be like part mom, part lover, part caregiver part abuser Oof. all these things yeah I think abuser she, i think is the easiest i think way. she nailed all that stuff um because he was a willing participant in this but you could tell she was taking advantage of him Does yeah. that make sense yeah 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 but that didn't bother me so much as like you have this thing that you've been after for so long why because it's an unbeatable suit of armor that's like a one-man army why would you put yourself anywhere within a fucking 30 mile radius of this goddamn thing and again though the radios like, are full. The, the amount of the, the the action, the comedy, the the emotional beats here, it just doesn't add up. We now get the dad dying, set up earlier, Weird. that he has the, the heart attack stuff, yeah, uh, yeah, like yeah. whatever. Cardiac we arrest, we see it from the 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 heads up display from Blue Beetle that like, oh shit, cardiac arrest, this is bad. And the whole family starts like screaming and stuff, but like it was just following up like some comedic beats with the family and like then some action beats that like we're so back to back to back that it meant nothing to me. It mm -hmm. felt so by numbers of like, well, this had to happen so that we can move Bye. on. Yeah. And that sucks because we I, we all liked the family. Yeah. Family's so, the best part of this movie. How did the dad die and it meant nothing? Like it was just like, all right, yeah, cool. I get well, it. And they did that thing too where it's like you don't they drug it out so long that it was like, wait, is he really dead or is he not totally. dead? Or is he okay or is he not? Oh, no, Nasty. okay, he's dead, he's dead, okay. Um they have Jaime. Uh, everyone's sitting there. The house is burned down, uh, and they're like, they want to cry, they want to fall apart, but they're like, no, we got to go rescue Jaime. We got to go rescue Jaime. Well, how would we possibly do that? Luckily, there she is. Jenny Cord shows up because she ran her in Taco, or no, not Taco. I heard George Lopez in Taco uh, came over, uh, and they're like, awesome. I we here's what we'll do. We will go back to HQ and we'll get some cool shit and we'll go out there and fight him or whatever. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, meanwhile they've got Jaime upside down in the thing and they're they're running diagnostics on the beetle and taking whatever they want and they're transferring that over to Omac so that they can make him the one man army and then once they have it on Omac he'll be the guy but she's also putting on her little uh, palm pre that she can then have all the information there so she can make all the Omacs that we see in the mm -hmm. downstairs eventually. Meanwhile they get they go there they get the bug. Uh, they get a whole bunch of different weapons off the thing. Grandma pulls off the Gatling gun, looks really badass with it, and reveals that she was somebody who helped overthrow throw revolutions. Or, yeah, the revolution. And shit. revolutionary, yeah. They also, the, oh, sorry, the beetle itself, though, kept tripping me out because it reminded me of the owl. Yeah. Well, I mean, guess what the owl is like based on, right? Is that what it's based on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, you know, in terms of the look. Or so the beetle, it's the, or what is it? The bug? The bug. The bug. Real thing. In the DC yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's yeah. Ted Core's deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah cool. And, I, and I, I should. No, I'm right. I'm right. I was going to say, I'm not 100%. No, that Blue I'm Beetle sure. came before Watchmen? He, he did, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, no, he, did, he, yeah. did, he did, he did, he did. I can Google it. But I don't know when the bug got introduced. Uh, but, I mean, in that comic book. Or, sorry. You mean the bug. Anyways. Uh, then, yeah, so they have all the weapons. They have all the thing. They get in the bug. Uh, George Lopez can fly it because he's awesome. He flies out of there. They bump into a couple different walls. They do a couple different things. Um, and then, yeah, they, they're off into the sky doing their thing. And the, the grandma's got, I, we probably want yeah, I think when grandma revealed her guerrilla tactic, she did gave the whole breakdown of we're going to fly in here. We'll go here. We'll slam into the sewers here. We'll go underneath here and all the shit. So it was like, okay, they're going to do all this. Mm. What? No, no, this is Jaime. Sorry. Jaime. I'm looking at the wrong one. Uh, so then, uh, all the things that they said were going to happen, happen. Uh, they fly the thing over there. They crash into the ground. Uh, they all start getting shot and like, we need to move, which I was like, oh, they need to escape the people shooting them with machine guns. And instead, no, they kick on uh, beast mode, which then starts playing Motley Crue. Ding, 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 Kickstart my heart. Yeah, yeah. And it gets up and it just fucks these dudes up all of a sudden. Now they're on the defensive and they're just getting stepped on and stabbed through the chest. Yeah. And getting fucked up. Just kicked around, thrown around. Stabbed. Right? Yeah. All yeah. that stuff. Love it. Love this moment. Got a, got a, got a pop for me as far as hype and then a hilarious laugh. Because when you're playing a Motley Crue song, high energy, obviously rock song, uh, it's awesome. And then it cuts, and this bug is moving so slowly. 
<laughs> and I was like, the juxtaposition of that, that that image versus this high energy, high octane song. I was like, <laughs> and it really kind of weird and dumb. Change the bug's predicament because it was there getting shot. And like, we need to move. I'm thinking, oh yeah, the bug ain't bulletproof. You're like, oh no, we're just gonna walk at them and get shot longer, yeah. mm -hmm. and then just but have no problem. Whatever. No. Uh, eventually, the bug kills everybody. Oh, it does bug fart or yeah, bug fart. There you go. You have to have a fart button, a little fart noise. Uh, then it sits down and it lets the people go in that are going to do it. Everybody breaks into teams and shit. Um, Jaime's getting his powers sucked off. Uh, <laughs> they go in Damn. there. They see all the Omec uh, things hanging up. Like, oh, man, they're going to make a lot of fucking Omecs. Whole bunch you know of what them. Mean? Uh, and then you do your, you do your shit or whatever. Uh, Jaime wakes up, right? And he starts talking to Sanchez. He's upside Not down. Sanchez. He talks to Steve Zaragoza. In one of the... Uh... We talked about that. Cool. With him being upside down. Yeah, gotcha. I don't want to stop gotcha. you if, the, no, if there's no, more no. coming to that thought. Mm -mm. Um, but yeah, you know, he's doing this. Don't do that. You know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, he dies in it, right? Yeah, that's what happened. He dies, starts to die. <laughs> that's what happens. Uh, he starts to die there. And this is where we get, uh, you know, the Jonathan Kent, I'm dead, but I'll talk to you moment with his dad, which is sweet. You know, I made me sure. I, I'm such a sucker now for kids and parents stuff. Like, mm -hmm. the, he, I, I teared up during this conversation. Again, I like these two characters. I like yeah, me too. I am such a sucker. I'm a, I get emotional about this shit like so easy. It, it didn't hit me at all. Like, yeah. it just the way it was presented and, and there's just too many elements at play here. Would it would it hit you more if you knew a little bit more about the dad's heart attacks backstory? Is that the dad? You didn't see it was a deleted scene, but the dad was actually going to go save a dog. Got it. And in doing so, the dog put up its paw though. Like the dog was like, got sucked up in the t tornado. Oh, and that's it. Yeah, that would have helped. helped. Uh, the brainwaves sink because Steve Zaragoza is like, yo, brainwaves are sinking. What does that mean? <laughs> they're becoming one. Symbiosis. They become one. Spice Girls. Uh, they come back and guess yes. what? Now that they're one, Jaime's jacked up and is able to get out of the fucking mm -hmm. thing, the predicament or whatever. Uh, but the suit still is, needs to reboot. It, interesting here. Okay, so he gets out of the thing, has a collar around his neck. That I am thinking X Men oh, collar, yeah. right? Yeah, this neutralizes the, the powers, and the collar's just gone. No, no, the collar's not just gone, Nick. This is one of my favorite moments of this movie. We get a shot of him running, and it just pulls off. Yeah. Why put it on? Why have that elephant well, there? His arms and legs were, you know, restrained. So he yeah, worry about but he pulls up and he has but this he thing. Has but a when, he, when he, suit. he runs off, and it's just such a weird ass thing. And you literally like somebody animated it. Somebody animated his little fucking choker getting pulled off I, of him. I, I was it fully was expecting to have Sanchez be like, "Stop," and then unlock the collar so that his power could boot Instead, back up. Instead, Sanchez did the right thing. He got him out of the thing, got him out the door, shut the door, locked the door, and said, "We all die!" and fucking killed. By Olmec coming to town. That was horrifying. Yeah. Reminded me a lot of... I, I, the, the, I, my name's not Sanchez. <laughs> he did do that moment, which was, I guess, payoff for... Not a joke, necessarily, but a character-building moment for Susan Sarandon that I found more annoying and insulting to the intelligence of her character. And I understand why. Obviously, her character is supposed to be like, see people, you know, uh, uh, with, with a Latin background as other. I yeah. totally get that. But it's one of those things where you're like, but you're really smart. And like, would you really disrespect? I don't know. It's kind of weird. It, it just was a weird character. She's evil, though. She is. She is. And I guess she's supposed to be racist. Right. And I guess she's supposed to all those things. But there's. But but it makes the character so one dimensional when she has a character flaw that stupid. You know what I mean? Where it's like, oh, I did. Like, I. It sounds weird, but I kind of have to respect the bad guy in these movies as being like capable. And this is one of those things where I'm like, you work with. This is the most important person in your fucking life, and you don't know everything about this person. You don't even know their name. It's the most I, important I, fucking I think person in your life. I think she knows it doesn't give a shit. I think that's how they write it. I'm with you. It didn't, it's I didn't weird. like it. I and didn't I think like it was supposed to be this wonderful moment with this guy. And, and it ended up being an, an okay moment. I was like, it's just, a, it's just like, Lex, it makes her feel, it makes her, it makes her feel stupid. Lex me, knew therefore not Otis. Lex knew Miss Tessmacher. He took care of these people. Why? Why? Because they were the most important people. They were his they were hands. support structure for his criminal empire, right? Yeah. So it's one of those things where it's like, it just makes her sound... He hated him, but he took care. It makes her feel, it'll feel daffy when she's like, I don't know, this person's dead. Like, he's just like three people in this fucking movie. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I he's <laughs> fucking dead and Omax uh, walking and smashing up the place. Uh, all hell's breaking loose. I, I think at some point already the walls, the thing collapsed and separated Hocus Pocus 2 and uh, Jenny. Uh, More Pocus poor 2. blocking. This like, is, oh my God. It's so confusing. Like, like where's is George Lopez? Dead? What's going Who's on here? Where? What's there? Anything? But, yeah, so all this shit's happening. And like, you know. Nikki. I will say the, the, the splatter of blood with the, with the Omac coming in, out of focus. Very cool. Reminded me a lot of, stick with me, Robocop 2, the warehouse scene. Where the kid, where they all get slaughtered by Robo, by the second Robocop, the bad guy that's a drug dealer. You guys remember this movie? I don't remember. Terrifying. Same same style of mask. We're very angular. It, it terrified me when I was a kid. And I, I saw that. I was like, hmm, 
Hmm. It's a good. This is a good shot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we get some fights here. We get Grandma shooting the people again with her thing, and, you know, revealing to Jaime that uh, fun she, dialogue with her. Yeah. Like, you know, again, nothing here is like we've never seen it before. But I thought they did it well enough. Um, and so yeah, at some point, you know, Omar gets there, and then this voice that you have right now yeah, is right. Yeah. Like that from here on in this movie, it's just kind of like, man, we might have seen the rest of this movie before, but we've seen this more than anything. So, yeah, Jaime doesn't power up yet, and then George Lopez causes a distraction, and Omek throws something at him, and Jaime thinks George Lopez is dead. Pretty funny. What? I don't know if it was intentionally funny, but oh. George Lopez just standing on this fucking, like, castle thing, just like, hey, and then he just fucking gets blown the fuck up. All right. Uh, at some point, Jaime, you know, ah, I believe in myself kind of shit, and then he powers back up. Which, like, come on, AI. this is the moment that felt like it was built to 15 minutes prior. Yeah, <laughs> and so yeah, it's like, yeah. all right, cool, I guess we're getting it now, and it just, it, it falls super flat. So they start fighting again, and then they're doing it, and then his mask gets broken, and then, I forget how, but he gets the upper hand on Omek and breaks his mask, and then he's going to kill him, and, and AI's like, yo, Jaime, you said we don't kill Well, people. he has the moment where he's like, he gets, he gets the upper hand on him. And then says, your family's stupid. He goes, ah, my, right. family's my family's not yeah, stupid. Yeah, my family's yeah, my strength. At the moment stupid. that we were all like, oh, don't say it. Yeah. He's like, it's yeah, my strength. Yeah. I'm like, fucking A. Pretty sure that's actually a line from like five other movies. Yeah, 100 And then he beats the shit out of him and he punches harder. And so, yeah, he's about to kill him, but the robot stops him because now AI's got a heart, even though this is most, I mean, we think of how developed Karen was in Homecoming, right? Mm -hmm. Tell, tell her you love her. Oh <laughs> you know what I mean? There's so many great things or whatever. This is just a missed this opportunity. Is, this is closer to Venom. Yeah. Which is but it, even that, like, Venom, you had more to hate or love, whatever. This is just like, they didn't do anything with this. They didn't yeah. do anything interesting with having another fucking voice in your head. And in, in a relationship, you have to go because she can shut Some you down groups. and not let you move ever. Turned I did like that when they fully melded. Symbioted. She started speaking Spanish. Yeah, super like, cool. I was like, oh, that's, an, that's a cool Very, thing. very, very Where she cool. starts Where she starts speaking in, like, the language that he would probably be thinking in. Yeah, that was cool. It was hype. That stuff was presented very well. It just kind of, it felt like it came out of nowhere, even though it was, like, built to. Uh, anyway, she stops him. We don't kill. That's the thing. Blah, blah, blah. And he's like, no, but I really want to fucking kill him. And she's like, yo, Chill. would you feel that way if I told you I saw his entire life when I was getting blown into his brains? And so here, I'll blow his brains into your brains. And so we get to see this entire fucking man's life Dude, in reverse. We've re referred to this moment about 10 times already in this podcast. I can't believe <laughs> how many memories they showed and how in-depth they were going through this man's life that has been in the entire movie. He's one of the first things we see in this film, and he's just this fucking android guy who says a grand total of what? Ten words. Ten words yeah. in this movie, and now we're getting his backstory, and it's just zooming back, him getting younger and younger and younger. Like, it was so comedic and then so violent, so, I, so yeah. horribly violent. I didn't think it was comedic. I, this actually worked for me, but it was totally out of place. As a character moment, I was like, oh, that's really fascinating that we're, we're going back and seeing this kid's memories. And I, I like that they played it in reverse. It, it, this kind of works for me. I'll be honest with you. I can see where, where it would stick out like a sore thumb for you. But I was like, oh, and I think the actor did a good job of like just like emoting that. And then... We do get the beat afterward where he just lets him fucking drive. Like he gets, he gets up and like, take care of your family. Your family is strong or some shit like that. And then he's like, "All right, Susan Sarandon, you're gonna burn alive and blow up." And he grabs her, or drags her, and then a giant explosion, which Jesus kills all the oh my. And, that, and again, you know, I, we did the ah no. We we talked about we earlier when about when that, they yeah. drop the pomp pre and stomp on it, and that's the end of that thing. And then yeah, her reaction to being driven dragged into the f fire and like he's gonna blow up again. She, it's like. For some reason, she couldn't go up to 10. So she gives a solid six of like, what are you doing? Don't, hey, don't ah, kill me. Oh, stop, That's crazy. Stop yeah, yeah, don't yeah, be yeah. doing it. Like, oh, it was like, it was, oh my God. She was Fran. So much of the well, performance uh, was just I mean, Fran. Uh, did you step on that? I mean, it's probably fine. I can, get, I can go to, you know, I go to that, I take it to the mall and they have those screen replacement programs. At the mall. Actually, you know, what? I'm going to take it to Apple because Apple has a better warranty for this. So I might want to sell this up, later. Killing all the Omec uh, prototypes in the basement. It almost kills all them, but they're in the bug. And, uh, you know, Jaime uh, Wonderful into book. it. He's about to fall out, but no, what happens? Jenny grabs well, him. Why do we care? He's in a suit that's invulnerable. Everybody's to grabbing him. But wasn't the suit no longer working right? It was powering down. It was smashed up. Like, yeah, yeah. Like it's true. He didn't have the mask on. That's right. That's right. That's right. They save him. They pull him up. Grandma's like, now's the time we cry. And they all cry. But Jenny's crying outside the circle because she's not family. And then they welcome her into the family to come cry. And it's like, oh, that's sweet. 
Again, this is when I was like, who's driving the fucking thing? Yeah. You just had to pile it out. Uh, we jump back then into the daytime. And, uh, you know, Jenny's giving a little statement of like, I'm back. I'm in charge now. And it sucks. Or it's, you know, we, we're, we're going to miss my answer or whatever. But I'm in charge. And we're no longer doing weapons. And pieces. Everything's great. This is a great time for to be court industries. And then, uh, meanwhile, back at the Reyes residence, they all show up. Uh, or they did the funeral thing. And then they all show up at the Reyes residence. And then everybody's here, and the whole family show, or the whole neighborhood shows up with food, all ten of them. Yeah, fun, fun moment. I thought where yeah. I was like, I, you saw it coming. You're like, okay, obviously they come from a community. We all like care about each other, except for when they were getting assaulted by a SWAT team. Everyone locked their doors and was like, not and my fucking problem. What are you gonna do? I mean, nothing. You lock your fucking doors and get on the ground, I guess. But uh, everyone comes out, and you go, oh, they're gonna rebuild, right? And you know that Jenny's gonna come in and be like, your house is yours, right? But a moment that I thought could have been really good, under, un, like undercut a little bit. By Jenny coming and be like, I got it. All. I'll, I'll take care of it all for you guys, dude. And not only take that, take care of it all. I got it all. Don't worry about it. You just said this about the, the scene of her like on the news. That's essentially like, hey, everything, everything's cord's good. Cord's fine. Yeah. Cord's blah blah blah. No way. Didn't like, you just no, raid a fucking house in? Uh, like, are you fucking? I know the, the, the bad guys are gone. It doesn't matter. Cord, the name is done. Yeah. You're done. It's yeah. over. You can't just like put this new girl down. Like, hey, I'm running Some things Some private now. island okay. blew up. Nobody knows where it was. Nobody cares. I don't know, man. That's true, actually. I mean, like, it would have been it would have been a random island and like probably off the coast of Cuba. Like, no one would have seen it, probably. But I mean, she's telling island. them, though. She's on the news telling them. Well, she was just like, hey. Was she? I thought she made it sound like grandma or uh, my aunt died, but like. I, I don't know. I don't remember. What I mean, whatever, was. whatever. Maybe we, they weren't talking about the island blowing up, but she was saying there was bad stuff going on. Yeah. It's over. Yeah. Like that is enough of like, oh, y'all are over. You don't just get to expose yourselves and be like, well, yeah, I am admitting this, it. This is also the universe where Lex Luthor eventually runs for president. So you're like, ah, whatever. Eh, that could never happen. Uh, <laughs> so then uh, they do the food thing. They do the stuff thing. They're all sad. Jenny shows up. On her badass like, motorcycle. This. Exactly. Pulls up yeah. a fucking motorcycle. God damn it. Good for you. And then she's like, yo, you know what? Like, I'll take care of the house. Like I said, very Bruce Wayne-esque. Nice. Okay, great. Uh, then he, he gives the new truck LA. to the George Lopez. I bought the bank. I bought the bank. Uh, then Jaime walks her back to the motorcycle. And they're flirting, but he doesn't want to do it. And like, she's going back to the court mansion the or whatever. And, do you want to ride? This kid's popping boners left and right. Left and food is right, dude. You know what I mean? God bless. I had a boner in 10 years. And then here we go where AI's like, yeah, we have blood of your midsection. Then he burns through his outfit. This man will never, I mean, this would be top, top priority on me right now if I had this awesome ass scarab. Either I'm in the suit all the time. Yeah. Or we're figuring out like, I'm, I'm, or, do you want, or do you want a ride? Yeah, I want the cool ride. All right, hold on a second. Take off all my yeah. clothes. Mom, take the clothes. We're not burning more clothes. Yeah. We're burning too many expensive clothes yeah, right now. This is a lot. But he turns into Blue Beetle, which is cool. Everybody cheers for it, kind of. Uh, and then he grabs her and they fly away or whatever. And everyone's first thought is like, this woman does not have protection on. She's just flying. Yeah, I, I immediately space. turned to you. They flew really fast into the at atmosphere. So there's the no amount right. of bugs alone. Are yeah. She had a helmet, but didn't put it on. You're right. She did have a helmet yeah. right there. Right there. Motorcycle. Safety, everybody. Uh, then we uh, go to our first post credit scene where, of I'm, course. I'm Ted Cruz. I'm alive. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> Lord. If I can run for president someday. Uh, Ted Cord's <laughs> computer Cord's. pops back on. And my apologies. Like, I don't know who turned on my computer, but you're there. Tell my daughter I'm alive. Ted Cord's alive. I'm like, oh, all right. Yes. All right. Can't wait to see this. Never get followed Never up on it. No one give a shit about it. Uh, and then the last thing was the, the CH superhero from uh, the thing. Mm -hmm. Which was a complete waste of our time Chaplin to wait for. Colorado. Thank you very much, Kevin. It was and uh, Matt, ladies and gentlemen, is Blue Beetle. Oh, it's Blue Beetle, everybody. So now it's time for what I like to call Ragu Bagu. Dana dun 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 now. Ragu. Dana dun 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 now. Ragu. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Rad Guys Talk Bad Guys, the podcast within a podcast where we rank all the villains of the DCEU. Currently, there are 15 on the list. I will start from the bottom and go to the top. Number 15 was Enchantress and her baby bro in Suicide Squad. Oh. Number 14 was the literal devil in Black Adam and Black Adam in Black Adam. <laughs> oh. uh, number 13 was Steppenwolf in the Justice League. Helen number, Mirren and Lucy Liu weren't last. Number 12 Ouch. was the Daughters of Atlas in Shazam 2. Number 11 was Ocean Master and, of course, Black Manta and Aquaman. Uh, number 10 was Sir Pat in Wonder Woman. Uh, number 9 was Thad in Shazam. Number 8 oh was God. Maxwell, Lord, and Cheetah in Wonder Woman 84. Holy fuck, you guys! Number 7 was Steppenwolf and Darkseid in the Snyder Cut. 
Number six was Doomsday and Lex in Batman v Superman. Number five was Zod in Man of Steel. Number four was Black Mask and Zaz in Harley Quinn. Number three was Starro, Waller, and the Corta Maltese in the Suicide Squad. Number two was Barry, Re- uh, Reverse Flash, and Zod in The Flash. And number one was Butterfly, Judo Master, and White Dragon in Peacemaker. Where do we want to put Susan Sarandon and Omak? Let, let me let me start this, all right? Yeah. I have a feeling I, I might be outvoted on this one way or another. I can't believe how bad these villains are in this, these movies. That, this list is atrocious. I would put it put them be, just because of the enjoyment how funny some of this shit was some of the bad guy fights were like entertaining enough compared to some of the other shit we got here i'll put it under lex in you're a cbs psychopath. you're a psycho you want to put it number above seven steppenwolf above steppenwolf and dark side from the snyder cut yes you're a psychopath yes i mean this i'll put a number 11 so you would bump, you would put Sir Pat from Wonder Woman above at number ten, and then uh, Susan no, and you know what? I put I put her below Ocean Master, above the Daughters of Alice, because uh, Ocean Master, at least that guy, that, that dude, good good nose. You know what I mean? Striking sure. nose. Sure. Yeah, you're, you're right. You know, I agree Pat, with Patrick, that. Was Patrick Wilson is what I yep. want to say his name? Mm-hmm. Lion and bit. You know, at least he's hamming it up, mm-hmm. kind of Shakespearean style. And in this one, I I put a little higher because I like the actor that played Omac. I thought he did a good job. He was menacing. And Susan Sarandon again in Bull Durham. So, Bill Durham. Never forget. Well, then there you go. Number 12, then, is Susan and Omak from the one, the only, Blue Beetle. So now it is time to rank the DCEU one of the final times. The rankings are as follows. We don't have Andy here today. Thank you, Kevin. So Perfect. this is what we're doing, everybody. Um, number one, The Second Flash. Prey, Andy. Number two, Peacemaker. Number three, The Suicide Squad. Number four, Birds of Prey. Number five, Wonder Woman. Number six, Shazam. Number seven, Batman v Superman. Number eight, Man of Steel. Number nine, Zack Snyder's Justice League. Number 10, Shazam Fury of the Gods. Number 11, Black Adam. 12, Aquaman. 13, Wonder Woman, 1984. Number 14, Justice, Justice League. League. And number 15, Suicide Just. Squad. Uh, I will start the bidding and say I would put this at number 10 below yeah. Zack Snyder's Justice League and above Shazam Fury of the Gods. I feel that I won't think of this movie often uh, in the same way I never think of Shazam Fury of the Gods. Uh, but I enjoyed, I will look back fondly on this character of Blue Beetle. I would put it on this list at number nine under Man of Steel and above Zack Snyder's Justice League. Mm. Although I do want to say, I think it's better than Shazam. Yeah, me too. Number six Shazam there. Yeah. yeah. Too. But I don't think it's better than Batman v Superman or Man of Steel. I appreciate that. Uh, I would put it right where Greg puts it. Uh, I would say it's better than Shazam Fear of the Gods, which could not keep my attention for the life of me. And I watched it at home where I got to actually pause it. Uh, Snyder's Justice League, I think. It, you know, it wins out a little bit because it's 15 times longer than any movie should be. Um, but I would disagree with you guys. I thought Shazam, the original Shazam, was was had more fun to it. Sure. It did a lot more with the character than I think uh, they did with Blue Beetle in this. So I enjoyed that. Actually, I was one of the few that I was like, oh, that was that movie was not that bad. It was enjoyable. So there we go. It is the new number 10 in between Zack Snyder's Justice League and Shazam, Fury of the Gods. This list is 16 long. Very, very soon. We will add Aquaman. Two, which is called War of the Trenches. Is it really? No, the Lost Kingdom. The Lost Kingdom. Wow, War of the Trenches. Damn. (laughs) I'm excited for that. Oh, man. That is set for December. I don't fucking believe it. I think it's going to get pushed to next year. We got to buy. This is a note for everybody. You can just uh, tweet at me until I do it. And I tell you, we got to buy at Halloween one of those big old cardboard coffins. Because when it's finally all done after Aquaman, I want to print the list and put it in that coffin, slam it fucking shut, and burn it out. I love street. it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I don't want it this in anymore. Street. Yeah. I, I love it. it. Let us know in the comments below what you think of Blue Beetle, if you're planning on seeing Blue Beetle. Um, honestly, anything you really want to know, what your thoughts are on, on Bill Dunham or whatever the fuck Bill it was. Durham. Bill Durham. Um, Bull Durham. And uh, I love you all. Get hyped for Saw. It's happening starting next week. Saw 1. If you've never seen Saw 1, if you're ready for a, It's a little gross. I'm going to admit it. It's a little gross. But hey, they fantastic movie. Get into it, baby. They're on uh, Amazon Prime, most of them. So you can watch it on Amazon Prime along with us. We'll see you there. We love you all. Have a marvelous we'll day. We'll saw you there. We'll saw you there.